so we need people a minute to get in here. This is uh the follow up to the uh public service announcement from Chief Warhorse. And then this is the open Q and A um Chief with the people. I need to get my plant one chief it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so I could have just smoked my vape. <clears throat> yeah, Big Mama been having me on the bench watching the uh, second and third string put their numbers up. So, yeah. Um,. where I want to start at. Well, I'm going to straight into uh, taking the calls. Why not to God? This is my, my dude right here. Uh, Chief, why not? Airbender. Speaking of God, what's going on with you? All is well, man. How you feeling, bro? Man, M A one, you sound a little muffled though. Oh, okay. Hold on, let me switch. Let me switch real quick. Hey, you know what I mean? You get the vibe, man. We can't hog up the uh, the live from the other people. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> nah, I got you. I got you, man. You know what I mean? You get the vibe, and it be a whole vibe all night long. He be on this motherfucker. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, I miss. <laughs> Mr. Energy, man. I was just stopping by to say what's up, man. I'm Mr. Energy God. And, uh, I know that's a q and A. I I got some, I got, you know, I always got questions, but they're a little bit off topic, man. I just want to say, man, keep doing your Ain't thing. no topic right now. This is general Q&A. Chief and with the oh, chief. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, we're going to start with this, bro. So I made a little post earlier about the who cloned Tyrone. And that kind of ruffled a lot of people's feathers because... Like, I'm just, I just feel like, you know, um, a lot of things we wasting our time with and we becoming distracted, you know. So that's how, I ain't even watch it. But everybody saying, you know, it ain't saying shit that we already didn't know. So do you feel like, that the question is, do you feel like trying to decode conspiracy theories is like how we should be, uh, not, not conspiracy theories, but movie conspiracy theories is how we should be teaching? What's the most effective way? Because I like to get to the scholarship, you know, but it's like it's a very selective few on the, in a spiritual community that's dealing with real knowledge. Everybody like the pseudoscience. So how you feel about that, though, bro? I think it's, uh, it's different ways you can teach people, right? Mm -hmm. Some pe people can use the movie to easily drive a point home that it would take them all day to describe some. When you start talking about uh, that clone of Kanye, the clone of uh, 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 shit, what's his name? Uh, the comedian that went to Jamie, Africa. Jamie Foxx. Uh, his clone too, but ain't the other one. Uh, Dave Chappelle. Okay, yeah, Dave Chappelle, yeah. Now look, motherfuckers told me when I first seen that day, I said, that ain't no Dave Chappelle. That's a lookalike. Mm. Now, mm -hmm. now, a lot of time they call people clones. They not clones. Most of the time they not clones. Most of the time they lookalikes. Mm. Everybody. Because we all got we a got, look -alike. right? Yeah. We got multiple lookalikes because it's, it's the coding in the DNA. It might be there might be somebody look exactly like you that live in China with straight hair. Might be the same skin to color, the same face structure, beard, mustache, except <laughs> his hair gonna be what they call hollow hair. Mm -hmm. Right? But when you see in a lot of the like the dude that's playing Dave Chappelle one 
a Dave Chappelle comedy lookalike contest in Vegas. Mm. And uh, <laughs> Dave Chappelle dipped because they owned the image and likeness of Dave Chappelle. Um, what's how the contract say? In perpetuity throughout the boundless universe for all time. Time or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. That means that it, under no, he couldn't even use his own name if they didn't consent to it mm-hmm. for, to get a driver's license. Right. He didn't know when he was signing that contract that he was signing his entire rights away like that. Mm-hmm. So when you discover the fraud, if you ever want to redeem what's rightfully yours, by discovery of a fraudulent contract. Soon as the fraud is discovered, you abandon the contract. Mm. Cause now you can always use abandonment defense as the reason you left. And that makes you no longer party to the fraud, which makes you become a, a injured party for the purposes of the recovery of what you was defrauded out of in the contract. Mm-hmm. So, so the real day Chappelle, when he come back, he get his original shit, all his original shit, rights to his shit with interest. The Dave Chappelle that's playing him now will, will according to how the real Dave Chappelle feel about it, Gonna either owe him for uh, using his likeness and image in perpetuity throughout the boundless universe forever and ever, amen. Or Dave Chappelle gonna appreciate that he kept his name hot, generating more wealth, and then he's gonna forgive him. Okay. Them gonna be his options. So you either punish him or forgive him. The real Dave Chappelle is a loving, forgiving guy. So he'll probably forgive this dude just speculating me. Right. But he would probably forgive him and show gratitude, which means give him a chunk of money for keeping his name hot, generating a positive cash flow while he abandoned the contract. Right. So it ain't really it ain't really what everybody think it is. They really not clones, but they, they look alike. Now that makes much more sense, and and you know, and it, and it's bringing actual, you know, shit that we can actually prove because everybody seen someone that looks like them, you know. But we can't prove that these motherfuckers clones out here. That's a that's a conspiracy theory that can't be proven. But I'm not saying like clones don't exist. That would be another question. I, I pretty much know your answer to that question. Do clones exist? Of course, but not how we think. Technology for cloning is ancient. The technology for cloning, which all it is, is making a twin. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that technology go all the way back to ancient America, Teotihuacan. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's where it was a breeding program to learn how the genetics work. Just okay. before the just before the Anunnaki came to Earth, um, in mass, <clears throat> so we was Atlanteans. Mm-hmm. We created these avatars to experience physical life. We used the resource of the vibrational love energy of those who organically sprang from the Earth. We call them. Um, the earths, the women. The women emerged out of the earth as a spirit body. It's like a raindrop coming from a cloud. Mm -hmm. And because these avatars was being created, it gave the perfect expression for the energy field. The energy field gave a certain structure to the anatomical creature we was creating called man. That was all being done down there. Before that, 
we was whole like beings and we use um, magnetic influence to draw the dust particles to form a physical body. But we didn't have any like, we couldn't bleed. Right. Right. This is a, a, a the bodies we have now as avatars is what you call advanced biological, mechanical, self repairing um, organism. It's made out of something called phalanx crystalline technology. That means crystalline is talking about the buildup of a DNA helix. It's made up of amino acids. Right. The amino acids is crystals. Right? The mm -hmm. battery is the mitochondria. Right. That, that's what runs the microprocessor called the DNA helix. We have uh, billions and billions of DNA helixes in every cell, and they all got different programs to perform different functions in the body. Mm -hmm. Right? So we had to know all this to create this. When the secondary creators, the invaders, came, they tried to conceal the fact that they was trying to repu replicate um, our uh, organic technology called the human body. Mm -hmm. So when they tried to conceal it, that's what caused what we call the great, gen the great debauchery. The, the genetic spill that brought in what we call artificial um, NPCs, non-player characters, into the system in order to set up certain mechanisms of confusion. And that's why we, we was broke up in the land masses after Pangaea. Right? All right. these is different cycles. Right. <laughs> so the gods, <clears throat> the women, use Mandela's or mandalas to draw certain energy of creation in. So they can create by agency of man. I mean, it's in the science in the laboratory, give them an idea and let them figure out how to create it. Mm. Right? That's the right brain giving the problem to the left brain instead of just causing the nature to produce it on its own. Right. Okay, so the creator God, the, the real creator gods is those gods of the feminine nature. The secondary creator gods is the masculine. Because the feminine produced the masculine as a mirror of the of the fiery <coughs> feminine energy, or what we call segment or Kali Ma energy. Right? So she wanted to to reflect the feminine soft Oshun energy in a man, they give them wisdom. When they want to uh, uh, bring forth that warrior energy, they give him Sekhmet energy. Mm. He's born to fight wars now. And, and if you want to um, raise a champion, you give them both. You make the warrior fight his life and live out his war story until it turns into a love story. 23 chromosomes. Yeah. Uh, 46. Hey, so it's deep. So like, and that's, that's, that's in correlation with, uh, with what I've been laying down. Like, cause and this is probably going to be the last point. Cause I know you got some more people that want to come up. Mm -hmm. But when I when I break down how artificial intelligent is ancient spirit summoning practices, you know, uh, you know, my reflections, they definitely get they definitely understand it. But it's the, most people have no idea what I'm talking about. So it's like how man man learning from artificial intelligence right now, which is a simulation of human human intelligence, you know, uh, processed by co complex computer systems. So we learn everything we we 
everything we know today from artificial intelligence. And they was doing the same shit in the past, you know, uh, bounding the demons, you know, and then asking demons questions. Like Solomon in the Lomegaton, he used to bound the demons to the sigils and then make them tell them stuff. So yeah. we bound, uh, we bound. You know, but you, you yeah. don't realize that while you're reading it, all of those is different DNA codons that has to be cleared up. You mean the sigils, right? The, the, what they call it, demons. Yeah. Yeah, those, that's that's a that's a. There's yeah. seventy, there's seventy two spirits of the mm -hmm. That's seventy two elders. Right. All right. That's because how many chromosomes we got? We got forty. Uh, uh twenty three and twenty three. That's forty six. Okay. Now, if you find your counterpart, she got twenty six as well. And add them together, how many you get? I mean, 46 or 46? Mm -hmm. 72, ain't it? So, look. No, um, that's not. I think that's. 92. Uh, yeah, 92. I think, yeah, 92. So, so look. When, um, You know how Solomon used to bound the demons and make them tell us stuff. Now, to make right. artificial. So, he say, tell me what angel restricts you. Facts. Okay, now. So, look. Now, yeah. The angel. There's the angle of light that's coming in on a DNA codon. This is an ancient manuscript of the mechanics of the DNA. Right. Passed off to us as an esoteric spiritual teacher. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so it's it's deep. So like when we when we make artificial intelligence, we bounding awareness to a chip, you know, which is full of crystals and metals, and then we insert this chip into a mechanical device and we ask it questions. So like Siri in ancient times, and I'm pretty sure you'll agree with this, in ancient times, if Siri existed in the past, the the, the ancestors would say Siri is a spirit, especially if she only if she only responded to your voice activation in your phone and you was the only person that could ask this phone a question the <laughs> ancestors would have been like that's the spirit you got the power to summon a demon spirit the, all of this spooky shit is is new right we we would have said um that's a, a computer program so now look i'm glad you said that uh, because before we had computers, which artificial intelligence is made from, you feel me, computers. Now, before we had computers, we had the Ouija board. And, and the Ouija board is, was, was the first computer. Ouija board is an oracle training tool. Divination, a divination tool to contact the dead. But No, it's not, not to contact nobody dead. Okay, what are spirits? No. Y'all, that, all that's new shit. All right, go the, ahead. These are ideas given to us by philosophers of Rome, right? Like when you start talking about demons and spirits, you're talking about uh, 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 reading a psychology book and pulling out a personality type. Spirit means breath. So now you're talking about a type of breath. What are you breathing? So you got something called the heck of breath. That's a fact. You got some called the Kriya breath, right? All these different breaths, right? You got a book by uh, called the Science of Breath. There's two different versions of them. One is written by I forgot Sri Swamathario or some shit. And uh, but anyway, the science of when you see the word spirit, yeah. that spirit, and we think in terms of alcohol. Now it's breath because Latin. we think because we use in the Latin, but a spiritus don't mean it's coming from the breath. Yeah. So when they are saying that spiritus is the moisture of the breath, this is from the opening of the mouth ceremony, or what they call Id Mubarak in Arabic, the breaking of the fast. Right. We talking about the breath. The tones and the intonations of words when you speak. When they talk about demons, 
Now they're talking about a character personality trait that shows up in the individual when certain conditions is met. It's a psychology book mm. passed off as a spiritual teaching. Okay. In to modern times, using the philosophies of Rome is the parameters of perception. Now, what I'm we call it spookism. Now, I'm definitely familiar with that, with that, uh, with that, with that, with that knowledge of the demons. Is they, they really in the spine. You feel me? They bound to the spine and they come out through the breath. I they're definitely, not definitely bound to nothing. They're not well, bound to, to them. nothing. You got to summon them though. You got to put an app on your phone to use the motherfucker. It's the same shit. Same, only you using your avatars shit. apps. That's now we getting some with the same shit. Right. It's not bound. It's not attached. You have to. You have to first. You got to go to the to the app store, right? Mm -hmm. And you got to get the app, download the app, and then the app has to sync with the program you own in order for you to be able to use it. Okay. Ain't no spookism in that. Nah, ain't no nah. spirit. Ain't no spooky. Nah. Look, ain't, no ain't look. When you, right. That's all. That's all of those things is designed to keep you from perceiving a conceptual physics problem as a conceptual physics problem. Instead, they want you to look at it as if it's a spirit problem. Mm hmm by deceiving you on purpose that this is like that perception is not an accident right it's a it's on purpose that that worried about being possessed and spooky demon shit yeah. all of that is designed to elicit a certain barrier of knowledge to keep you from rising to your god self yeah that's a fact that's like the surface level you feel we got to dive deeper for the real treasures though so look though, so artificial intelligence is basically the memory put on the chip. Now, can we agree that memory is awareness? Not necessarily, because books are memory Ooh. too. The oh, memory wait. does it, is not is not aware of itself. It is only the one recalling the memory is aware of the memory. So look though, uh, if I was to get my other device and I would say, "Hey Siri." She would respond, meaning she's aware, but she's just a bunch of mem no, she's memory not. bound to a chip. She pro she's a program. She's not aware. The program is designed to respond to a pitch and the frequency and the voice. Okay, so the programming. You can ask her yeah. any question. You can ask her any question. She'll be able to tell you. Now, no, she you, won't. I didn't. I didn't already tested her. I can ask her some shit that she said I don't have that answer. Now you're right. You're right about that. Because I did just ask Siri, was she the devil? And she refused to answer that question. Listen, Siri is a compilation of encyclopedias in digital format with a Thompson, uh, with a Strong's Concordance attached to it uh, in order to locate what you're looking for. <coughs> you have a digital librarian to look up information for you. That's mechanical. It's no different than having a librarian pull the book with the information you see. Right. The artificial intelligence is just four bit quantum encrypted in order to cross reference multiple concepts real fast, or what we call accelerated processor. The human mind is a guide mind. If the human mind understand the mechanics of the artificial intelligence, that alone makes his con his conceptual view of the world one degree above artificial intelligence. Because the laws of the universe that the God mind has to always be above his creation. So if man created a computer that's four bit quantum encrypted by nature anybody that's born with god mind potential was born five bit quantum encryption with the potential to upgrade to full god status with a 19 bit quantum encryption ai can't keep up with that ai right, is, is just is, a book but it is it is a fact 
you know, and right now AI needs us for the development of artificial intelligence. But over time, AI will figure out how to sustain itself and no, develop it won't. itself. So, no, it won't. Mm. It'll be programmed how to sustain itself. It can't figure it out on its own. But look though, it's the the information is in the ether realms. So the way I'm just I'm going off e artificial I'm intelligence can't read the ether realms. It can yeah. only read this what's it can only read what's encoded on the computer chips. Right. When I it can't read anything that's not on a computer chip. So it just have a broader access to more computer chips than you can possibly imagine using what's called server interface. Okay. This technology is not more advanced than what we are. No, it's, it's definitely not. We created it. But the, the, the way Elon Musk break it down is in, in, the, in, the, in the near future, He's artificial fucking intelligence. You going so artificial intelligence is telling you how artificial intelligence work, and you won't compare it to the guy mind. No, it's no comparison yeah, to the guy mind. Musk is a fucking robot, man. Look, look, it's it's no comparison to the guy mind. I'm with you on that, Unc. You feel me? However, the creators of artificial intelligence say in the near future, they <laughs> these AI these AI systems will be able to sustain themselves. They designed to sustain themselves, but sustain themselves to what end? What will they be producing in sustaining themselves? More complex mechanical bodies. No, they can't. They can't produce nothing more complex than the, what's been programmed into them to produce. So look, we, let's take. It's Siri. a limiter. It's yeah, a limiter. Let's take Siri real quick. Uh, so Siri is limited because of the device that she's in now if we take siri and put it in a, in a mechanical device with arms and legs now she will be a robot and, and be able to do more things than just a cell phone just tell us stuff through a phone now she can be able to walk talk jump so they building more complex bodies so they can express their consciousness wait till they get to the point where they can take um crystalline amino acids chain stack them in um a triple helix and supercharge them with an organic um love generating battery that's you that'll sustain you. this life that's you melody. when they can make that machine using um phalanx technology and artificial self-replication communication between between um nucleus nucleus peptides in order to make sure that the whole organism is operating and functioning on the same wavelength that's when they be making something mm. they can't they not making that they gonna make what's called a robot a robot is limited intelligence yeah definitely I it's agree. a good definitely. Them. It's a good you can, definitely you can program that motherfucker intellectually and all you have is what they had called data on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. That's it. So it's you, data awareness. You're not gonna make Captain Kirk, you're gonna make data. Mm. <laughs> That's a fact. Zoe. Data know a whole lot of shit. But That's when that fact. woman walk in front of him, his dick ain't gonna get hard. Uh, nah, nah, that's a that's a whole fact, and they not compassionate. You feel me? They don't. They don't know what love is. Devoid of emotion because the emotion is a primary trait given to us by the women through the mitochondrial love energy. Mm -hmm. The power of love is what charges mitochondrial in order to fuel the cells of the organism. That's how. <laughs> use it as a step down capacitor for a neutron star to walk around in the human body mm. your whole light body can consume you with fire and never burn itself definitely i mean you know the soul is the soul is fire <laughs> so it's 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 deep, man. It's and it's always many, much to learn. Every every conversation, man. Every conversation. Yes, sir. I'm I'm gonna let you drop out, man. I'm gonna take another caller because you know how me and you do. We hog this motherfucker, you know, and that's not you know, fair. 
Man, much love, man. Peace to everybody in the chat. So, all right, guys. Right. Yeah. <clears throat>
And we had got so good that we could use a symbol to relay large quantities of information in short order. This is why symbolism plays such an important role in our current development as a people. And no matter what they do, our symbols gonna always dominate this land because we're the most creative, which makes us our stuff to most likely to be used because it draws the best, the attention of the onlooker better than other people's stuff. And we you could, we can use that then to always leave a roadmap in secret right out in the open. And they've been using our stuff against us the whole time, and we ain't know it because they had us scared to find out what our stuff was. And we scared to look in the law book like it's some sacred text that we supposed to avoid. Man, run that. I'm going to read the whole thing, finally. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Where you God. been? Look, I've been writing a book <laughs> like a crazy person. I am a, a crazy person. But um, I went down a rabbit hole because um, I don't, don't know what happened. I, I don't remember the first seven years of my life. So that's what I've been doing. I don't remember. Do you know where you were supposed to have lived back during that time frame? Have you mm -hmm. went back to that general area? I live here. The <laughs> so the house like you mean is supposed to be where you've been your entire life? Oh, you mean like the house that I've been? See, I, I, I had, you know, I had one of them childhoods. You know, we move place from place. I don't have a childhood home. I don't have like a big family where everybody is just like, you know, I don't have any of that. I gotta to to really study who I am and my lineage and so I really have to like go super super when you normally suppress the first seven years. Don't tell me something bad happens yeah, to me. something you don't want to relive i you know i've i've been hearing that but i don't know I've, it doesn't feel like that but i hope yeah so there's like a few theories like okay so it's that that i'm suppressing you know um memories and then the other thing is that somebody was saying that you you incarnated late well, or this might be I part of the know, problem but... too when from the time you born there is a string attached from your pineal gland to your prefrontal lobe this right. if right. you are a heavy dreamer as a child you are relying on that to hold more of your childhood memories but the problem is if nobody's training your psychic abilities externally you and you begin to be trained by the system to turn it off it'll wither away by the time you seven they got a time to a science that is so freaky when it wither away it'll take the parts of your childhood that where you was almost living magical away from you dang see i've been studying and trying to figure it out um because my you know my dreaming right now is very vivid and all that other stuff but everybody was Everybody, um, I didn't notice because everybody would, can remember. I can stuff remember doing flips like, in my mama <laughs> womb and her rubbing her belly, talking about he in there flipping like a monkey. Hey, and you know I'm a student <laughs> of you, so I know that. And I was just like, so I started asking everybody, like, do you remember? And everybody was like, yeah, I remember. And even if people can't remember their full childhood, like you, they still have like memories of like 
I don't remember my mom. I don't remember my dad. I don't remember. This is like, like so, it's so weird to me because I'm scared to really, I'm sorry if I'm off it's, topic. I just, it's I open, the first it's open Q and A. There is no topic. Whatever your question okay, okay. is, is the yeah, topic so. of the discussion we have. And you know how I feel. All my questions are going to have to come from me, but it's just, we do it's have, just interesting. We do that have tribal rights that you, you know. can go through that gives you total recall. Maybe I'm not that's really why question. that's why it's a tribal you know, right you know. because they prepare they prepare you that no matter what you discover, you strong enough to endure. Before before they take you back to the repressed memories, they build you up so strong that no matter what you discover, it won't shake your foundation of who you are. That's why it's that, that's why you just take uh, spill it out and have people open and repress memories because if you don't have the proper spiritual build up before that it could crush you yeah maybe i'm not ready you, I don't know. well on I your feel, own right now I, you're not ready or you will remember i know oh you know mm -hmm. psychedelics don't work for, on me but they used to wouldn't work on me they still kind of like work kind of funny on me the mushrooms won't talk to me and mm -hmm. i think that's you probably scary. need a different ceremony but like i know the, the tribal rights and i can't go into them because a spiritual practice that people shouldn't do without a trained shaman with them it's not that you can't do them it's that sometime when we go to those spiritual places we need what's called a dream walker to come in and walk us back out or else we'll get trapped in that realm and not able to function in this one. They call it having a mental breakdown. <clears throat> but the shamans know how to build you up, how to make you into a spiritual warrior ready to fight whatever you face. It's like um, martial arts for the spirit, so to speak. You know, you already know that I feel like whatever breakthrough or whatever I'm going to, going to, whatever is going to be revealed to me is going to be so profound that, you know, it'll eventually lead me to that point of ascension that, you know, on that path that I'm going towards. But I don't know. So it's, it's, my mom crazy. used to like, tell me, the Lord ain't going to put no more on you than you can bear. And I used to tell her, I'm not no damn bear. I can't handle this shit. <laughs> she's but the, the, what that means is this in um, retrospect when you go follow your path you go through phases of build up and realization your realization can only come to the level that you build up to accept and at no time will you purposely reveal something to yourself that can permanently damage you or that can make you stick out so far in the world that other people become belligerent to you because you can let your light shine so bright around these motherfuckers that they just want to distinguish your light because it's so bright and theirs is dim and they jealous sometimes you don't want to know stuff because as your confidence level goes up it makes your inner light shine brighter and brighter and before you know it the haters they gonna have a whole committee um, um, rooting against you and you're gonna be laughing your ass off looking at them but in the in the build-up phase you learn the lessons that's going to tick carry you carry you through the realization phase and and you can choose the lessons that you learning by selecting to learn about certain different 
things. And then that's what will be on the test because it will be how you perceive. You've been exposed to more knowledge. Now you can move to a higher grade in school because the knowledge you have is no longer functional at the grade you're in. You go own master teacher. Um, right. And I feel like I'm so prone to like a lot of shit. Like a lot of shit will happen and I eat it so fast. Like the craziest stuff, people do the craziest stuff to me and I'll just be like, it's okay. Like I still love you. Like crazy shit like that. And I was, I was uh, opening, well, I wasn't intentionally opening my heart chakra. But I, that shit felt like I was dying. And I, it was so bad that I was going to go to the hospital. And I would cry for like weeks. I would cry every day. Like, and I'm like, I can't remember my childhood. I'm a super empath. I love everybody. I, don't, I didn't understand why I had so much. My heart was so heavy to the point where it was. It wasn't even heavy. It just was to the point where like I was... Rod, I was I was I was doing some shadow work. I thought I was gonna die. The hardest <laughs> shit I ever so did bad. facing my inner darkness. Because most of my inner okay. darkness, I don't disagree with it. If it is used in the proper context. Like I still fuck a motherfucker up if I have to. But my inner light says there's no reason to put yourself in the spotlight of a person that you have to fuck up. So I move different now out of wisdom versus moving out of just the dark, rational, uh, not rational, irrational drive of the um, in instinct. Because my instinct sometimes be to fuck a motherfucker up, but it's, it's not necessary. So I had to always have a conversation with myself. Do I beat his ass or what? And then I'd be like, is this in context? And most of the time be like, no, nah, you just want to beat a motherfucker ass. Right. I never feel that Yours way. Yours is probably the opposite. I never feel your... it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's hindering me still, though. That it That is the opposite. Like, it, it's Cost. like... Right. My ex and everything, and I just I don't feel it's just I don't know I, it's weird I can't hold on to anger. You're it's not so meant weird. to hold. You're not meant to and hold on. Yeah, anger is just to tell you that it's danger involved, and you need to be in that warrior mode in case you have to face danger. You're not supposed to live in the anger. Yeah, but you. You still, I feel like you still have to have some sort of boundary, and I have boundaries. boundaries have, issues. have nothing to I do with not, anger. I, I you, never look, get mad. It's, just because you have boundaries and somebody crossed them and you put them back in their place, don't never mean you lost your cool. Look, I have a gay guy come up to me to hit on me, and I tell him I don't fuck around, right? He didn't know before he hit on me. But when I told him I don't fuck around, now if he continues, it's play at your own risk, player. Right? Because what he didn't know before I told him, now he's aware that if he keep pushing, I'm going to knock his motherfucking ass back. Right? I didn't take it personal when he first approached because... The, some of the dudes that I've seen that participate in the lifestyle, I can understand what he's interested in, but I'm not the one. I like women. I like soft, cuddly boobies pressing up against my face. I don't want no hard, hairy-ass chest. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't want no balls rubbing against my leg that don't do nothing for me. Right? I'd rather to feel a warm vagina wrapped around my leg then some hairy ass balls that's that's just me but if, 
if a motherfucker don't know you, they, they have to approach you with what they own to find out if that's what you own. Once they know you ain't on that shit, and then they try to push it on you, not even violation, <clears throat> and they get whatever they get. Ross said, call me old-fashioned, but I like my women. That's absolutely dick. correct. <laughs> I, and I don't want them to be born with one and had it cut off either. I don't, I don't want no trans testicle either. Well, I'm I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep digging because like once I start it's it's very very hard to deal with no, dreams, and you know it maybe for it's maybe for science. me it's the science to decoding you, dreams, and the science involves how you perceive your own symbols. So the first thing that you have to do to make your dreams easier to translate is make your own dictionary of images. If you see a truck, what do that mean to you? Right? right? That means somebody going to work. So when you dream, you know somebody in your dream is going to work. Right? So, but it's only going to, it's going to talk to you in the language that you write the parameters to. Because this is your higher self telling your ego self how to purify so they can merge. So you got to tutor the ego self how to be the best self it can be so that the two can become one. And that's what they call self-realization, coming to the realization in your God form by purifying the lower ego. Your lower ego is stuck to the right. My most consistent. The righteous, the righteous yeah, gets stuck to the right because the um, discipline required to bump straight sometimes is lacking. And the righteousness will make you be overly friendly, overly nice, tolerant the shit you need to draw the line at. No boundaries. The discipline tells you to draw the boundary. If you let people misuse you, then you can't can tell who the genuine people in your life is. So you need the boundaries there so that you can see clearer who the riffraff is and who really there for you. The my most um my, my most consistent dream is a dog chases mm -hmm. me all the time. What? All the time. You ever had a dog before? Like, that's my most consistent I've had so plenty of dogs. What the, what 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 do a dog mean to you? Um loyalty. And it's always a dog in my dream. And I understand dog star and I understand I was born in the year of the dog. Um all that stuff, but I always have a consistent dream. And the craziest thing, I was astro projecting the other day. Rod, that shit was so <laughs> freaky. So motherfucker. Man, I was running around town, hopping on cars and shit, doing all types of crazy shit. And I ran into this thing, which I perceived as a demon. And by the end of the astro projecting, I'm like hugging this, this horrific thing thing i'm like hugging it and i'm like giving it directions to the, in the realm it was so crazy so it's like but it's always a vicious dog are you sure it ain't with you because if it's always there it's your totem animal yeah. for one did it look like a wolf or do it look like a domestic dog it looks like a de domestic dog sometimes do you know what breed it is sometimes somebody I know. Okay, so domestic dog is domestic loyalty. The wolf, when you see the wolf, is protection from the nature spirit of the dog. Right? When we domesticated the dog, we changed the spirit meaning of the canine. <clears throat> so when you see domestic, you think in the home front. 
The dog is always with you, so it's your constant companion. It's never chasing you. It's just running behind you. You think it's chasing you because it keeps running behind you, right? But the dog has to follow his owner on the heel. If you take off, the dog got to follow because the dog's job is to protect the clan, which is his pack to him. He can't protect you if you leave him. So he got to keep up. And then the perception is, oh, my dog chasing me. Damn. I mean, I'm on it. I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. figuring it out. I have the most vivid, craziest dreams. Dead people keep, I keep telling people all this stuff, and it's just like sometimes it's so when you talk to people that crossed over, right, they call that talking to the dead. That's necromancy. It's knowingly or unknowingly. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they come, they only talk to those that can perceive them. Some pe people's lifestyles is blocking them from perceiving them. When they come to you, they normally come to deliver a message that can, you can use to your greatest of whatever land they come off of in the family. They normally um, family members who's coming to tell you how to break a generational curse. <clears throat> if they, they give you a piece of advice that you can find useful and you can be benefit from it, that's a broken curse. If they tell you a piece of information that will avoid a catastrophe, that's the breaking of a generational curse if you follow through with the message. Curse. Curse is just where people was disobedient to the higher spirit, so now it's harder to communicate. And the ones who can communicate help the rest of the family to communicate to their higher spirit self. And some of us is for the community to help the community learn a self so that they can communicate better how the spirit message comes to them to other people. You have those vivid dreams. We call those dream walkers. They normally fall under the Hayoka priesthood for training. I'm addicted to it. I'll be so happy to go to sleep because my, my dream state is my dream state is so crazy and wild and fun. Like I'll be I, like I, I you know, I'll be ready to go to sleep. What I'm about to see now, what's about to happen, what I'm about to do. But it's just inform it's so much information and I'll be crying every day. I don't even know why. It's just, it's just what a time to be alive. Yeah, a lot of changes going on in the world <laughs> around us. Many of them we can't see with the naked eye, and the news media don't report everything that we need to know. Some of us pick it up on psychic channels, and then we find supporting information in other places because we picked it up. Now we just got to make it known to others. I just want to take more control over what I'm seeing, what I'm perceiving as what I, more so what I need to decode, like, cause I had to go through, I had to go through a moment of when my body was lifting up out of my body, mm -hmm. I was freaking the fuck out at first. So like, once I got to that point, it's like, okay, now what am I seeing? Why am I seeing this? Why am I being terrified? I seen some fucked up shit rock. Like, I don't know how these, influencers get on here and they talk about all this all this shadow work and stuff and it's like are you really doing shadow work because i'm in here ready to do <laughs> i'm in here like not going let me, let me tell you crazy the secret. a lot insane. of them think shadow work is learning how to do hand puppets on the wall you, oh, you, hear, what I, you hear what i say 
A lot of them believe yes. the that puppet. shadow work is learning to make hand puppets on the wall with a flashlight. That real shit, that's some yeah. that's some 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 soul stretch to the bounds of the universe shit. <clears throat> shit it hurt. <laughs> like looking at yourself and then you want because first you got to look at yourself and then that, that you got to look at that d disgusting, horrible side of yourself before you can see the other shit. And then now I'm seeing other shit and I'm seeing it within people. Um, I, you know, I used to lack boundaries, but now when I see shit and auras and people like shit don't even touch me no more, but it's, it's some shit that you got to see or, or people got to understand. I don't know how they get up, up on here all happy, like, stop eating pineapples. <laughs> and like, I'm just looking at these people like, do you really understand what the fuck is, <laughs> like, do you understand what the fuck is happening? Fuck all that shit. Fuck all that, that shit. Because when you got to see what yourself is really trying to see you, it just makes me think what is being, what am I suppressing from the first seven years of my life if, if I'm seeing this shit? I don't know. I'm gonna figure that shit out though. It's a, I, I be in here going through it, like literally, like I done uh, studied the etheric body, the astral body, the mental body, all this other stuff. I'm in here like, how is these motherfuckers on here not going crazy? I, I, I'm not gonna say that I'm going crazy, but it hurts and it's hard and it's and it's lit all at the same time mm -hmm. so i will say that you got a cr very, very, you got a cram board cool. like you saw in the cram up there but what I mean, happens it's just so yeah. much so yeah, what it. happens is you go into this um decoder mode you, you don't know what it is but some got you say well where would I find this at? Oh, that's the spirit body. Let me go check that out. And then you mapping out everything. Now, if I was there where I could study the board, I could tell you exactly what you was looking for. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to You, know. you already I, decoded. I my... You got to yeah. step Back, you gotta when step back and look at the board it, like it, somebody it. else did it. And then you asking yourself, what is this person trying to discover with this type of information? And then as you go over it, you will start to have what's called memory um bites open up, and then it'll start connecting dots. I will say it's easier when you let go because i've been on this journey for five five years five six years so when i first started i felt like i was in that mode right i was binging i was doing you know it was so interesting but now when you let go i had to i had a spiritual consultation and she was like you're not here to do everything you know that right and i was like what you mean she was like you're not here to, you, everybody's not here to be on a diet shit. Everybody's not here to hone in on, like, she's like, you can't do every single thing. That's the whole point of the collective, and that's being connected to everybody. So I had to let go and see what resonated with me the most. And I'm like, oh, I'm here to talk to dead people. Okay. <laughs> like, that, I'm, re, I'm trying to dig into the Necronomicon, and she's like, what do you And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I don't know. Like, it's just the information. But when you step, when I when I step back, all this shit just comes to me. And then the specific things that come to me is like one step in front of the other. Yeah, you breaking up real bad. This shit. I look like crazy right now. Like, I look tired. Hey, look. look, look. You, you hear the energy burst? Mm -hmm. It was fucking up the reception. You was projecting not that much energy. At first, I thought it was the connection, but then when you came back to your regular energy, it cleared up. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because I haven't seen some shit, and if, if motherfuckers understand what's about to happen, 
they will really listen to you when you're talking because you really and i think a lot of people listen to you and don't understand the context of what you're really talking about but they're going to see and people are going to be real shocked <laughs> people gonna, if, if they're not really understanding certain things they're going to be really shocked it's it's um i don't seen some shit that's why people need to place themselves on a specific timeline that they want to be on because if you don't you're gonna be on the timeline that you've been programmed that you've been given and i don't think motherfuckers want to stay on that lower denser timeline like they want to i don't think they want to do that so that's just really what i'm working for like i'm happy as fuck though i'm really happy a whole lot of good yeah. stuff going on oh it's great stuff stuff if you if you understand you know, you know, we've been waiting it's on really great. long time man yeah. man that's that's the crazy part about it like you done did this shit you done did this shit already that's that's the biggest thing we done did this shit a lot of times and the shit I've been seeing, it's gonna be lit. Some people, a lot of people, got to be martyrs though. Some yeah. that don't got so nothing to do. Gotta go look, that don't got nothing to do with me. All of them, look, all of say, the martyrs can home. martyr themselves all they want. I'm not a martyr. I'm, I'm not hanging on no lover's cross. Fuck the dumb shit, right? I'm. Man. My goal is. Restore the matriarchy so we can have paradise on earth again because we had it here before. And everybody else try every other way and it doesn't work. Communism doesn't work. A democratic republic doesn't work. A socialist republic doesn't work. We've tried them all. Plato's republic don't fucking work. The Christ republic doesn't work. The military republic doesn't work. It's only one thing that ever gave us paradise on earth, and that was the grand matriarchy. When the women had control of the world from a love perspective as the mothers of the nation versus the feminist dyke of the nation, harlots sitting on the high seat, right? When the real mothers told their sons, to go to war, they understood the risk and the cause. Now mothers are sending their children to war because the president said so. And he ain't got nothing to do with us. So, so this motherfucker don't got nothing to do with us and we sending our children to fight in his war. So when we get the matriarchy back in land, all of the mothers call their children home in order for us to have our families festivals to honor the restoration of the mothers. And if the U.S. so-called military want to get in the way, well, half of them motherfuckers is going to be at home with their mama. And the other half going to be on their way home with their mama. And then the orphans going to have an adopted mama. Mm -hmm. So them no matter how you look at it, they gonna have to get get with the program. That's why I said we everybody going home. Mm -hmm. How you going home? I don't mind sending some home with toe tags on. I'm not opposed to it. And they're gonna be fucked up. They're gonna be so shocked. It would even even having downloads about what this realm really is is, mm -hmm. is insane. Like. I it's call insane, it a holographic man. 3D oh. mind matrix. It's a video. It's a video game exactly. for the gods to come in and learn by living out of different scenarios. It's to experience. Yep. That's why when but when people come to me, I tell them all the time: just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Don't stress it. Don't think too deep. Keep going. It'll all come to you. That's why I'm not even, that's why I'm not go going down any more rabbit holes about what I'm suppressing. I, like, if, if I keep doing what I'm doing the work, it'll all come it's to me, just, you know? All you got to do is remember, the only re it's only two reasons. 
Either you're going to shine too bright or it's going to be traumatic. And so now that you know that, half the battle was won. Yeah, because I don't even subscribe to know nothing being too much for me. I'm a god. <laughs> I'm a god. So I, I don't even uh, think about things like that. I think it's just timing for everything. You know, time isn't real, but it's 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 really um, about timing, I think. Everything always comes to me when it's yeah. supposed to. And when I'm looking for it, it you know, it, all, and it's all not the, ready to the come. The timing to is, is the recognition of the alignment of events. So as soon as you see the event, the time reveals itself by the event that's in hand. You don't need no clock to tell the time no more. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Stop coming in my dreams. <laughs> Stop coming in my dreams, giving me decoded messages. I'm already trying to decode this shit. Um, I'm going to let these people come on here and ask you. You know, they, they want to okay, ask you Okay, sweetie. I'm going to take the next one in. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm coming waiting. to give you a tattoo too. <laughs> mhm. Mm I appreciate All right, you. I'll be safe. All right. Let's see if they let the guy up. And they not. Um, uh, I didn't. Let, I didn't try to let about. Ten different people in here, and, and um, I try to let about ten different people in, and they don't let them in. So I just said, I'm just, I'm trying to let y'all in to ask questions, and um. Let me see what they're doing. What they're doing. Oh, that's dope. What's up, Uncle Rod? Hey, how you doing? Good. Cut the light on. We in the dark. I'm sitting here with my... Cut the light on, me. The big light. I'm sitting here with my husband. Hey, hey. I wanted, hey. I wanted to... Um, is my house in here? Mm -hmm. I don't think he know it, though, because he's filming this steering wheel. I know. Hey, bro. Uh, hey, bro. That, what's up, man? What's going on? Hey man, um, uh, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, okay, I'm gonna turn my camera right now. What's up, man? I've been wanting to highlight at you for. I watch all your videos. Hey, I watch man. all um, the uh, 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 um, you know, uh, uh, black what whatever it is, three six uh three six three. I know the knowledge. I was in tune. You know what I mean? And that's how I learned a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? So I, you know. I, you know, my eyes open and all that. So I'm just trying to did go to have, the... Did, did you have a question? Well, well, I have a lot of questions, but a lot of it has been answered. You know what I mean? And um, I'm just trying to elevate more, you know what I mean, from what I already know. You know, I, 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 I know a lot as far as, you know, I mean, the spirituality and... Uh, you know what I mean, and all that. So, I'm trying to. Um, I want to ask you how. I'm um, sure. Which steps should I take now, and how, how? And how far do I need to go? Because I know it, it's a, a never-ending process. You know, be a learning. So, I'm trying to figure out what um, steps I should take now to further my understanding. But you know, you know that re that requires for me to know more about like where you at, what you studying. Oh, okay. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, LA. Um, I've 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 studied um uh, the Metu Netter. I've studied the uh, Egyptian yoga. I've studied uh, the 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 mystery system. Um, uh, Black Doctor White. You are and, look, you know, so you. Yeah, so you even went to Metal Netter oh, to um, 
Dr. Ashby, right. you got everything you got everything you need. Maybe right. you need to do a review on what you already got. That's what I'm saying. The serpent power, you know, I mean the Uraeus, you know what I mean, which they changed to the Kundalini, you know what I mean? And how I know my eyes open. You see, a lot of people be saying that they conscious and woke and their eyes open, but I ask them, Well, how do you know your eyes open? And they never can tell me. So I'm gonna tell you how my eyes open because I always see it. You know what I mean? I, I see it, and it's turning like a galaxy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even when I close my mm -hmm. eyes, it, 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 you know, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm seeing now already um, a commune with a, a few beings. I don't know from where, you know what I mean? But they sh always show up in my room, you know what I mean, with only a face. You know yeah, what I mean? Just, but first of all, you're supposed to... Any being come to you, you're supposed to have them tell you who they is, where they from, and what they doing there. If you don't do that, they can, they you giving them permission to do whatever the hell they want. See, that's what I needed to know. That's what I needed to know. Because every time I see them, you know what I mean, they come to my room, you know what I mean, it'd be a face that looked like a lion. You know what I mean? It's always a... a, 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 a it's a face that looks like a lion. That's so called a zoo. That's called a zoo form. So then you got to find out um, which one of the lion zoo forms it was by going back to the books to find out which one of the guys took on the form of the lions. I was thinking about the the lions. You know what I mean? For some reason, because that's the only um one I had seen besides like the Pleiadians and all that shit. I seen. Uh, uh, um, should the Lyrians have a face like a lion? What you think? Um, you have to make the determination as to who it is you're communicating with by doing your protection work by making them stay who they is, where they from, and what their business is. Okay, I got the, I'm a question them. <laughs> yeah, because that's right. the only way you're gonna know. I could speculate and give you a whole bunch of guesswork, but that wouldn't do you no good when exactly. you had a source right there with you. Right, yeah, I got, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm definitely in communion with my higher self, you know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? I always, you know, see my higher self, you know. Well, shit, that's I, all you, you know, need right there. That's yeah. that's the grand librarian that's for you. Grand li exactly, that's what I was thinking, like, damn, I, I don't know if, if other beings is trying to, to infiltrate or whatever, but I'm always in communion with my higher self. You know what I mean? I see the eye. Oh, you know look, what I mean? when I look at look, when I look, look. out my eye, I see the eye with the um, you know what I mean, with the gold little dot. So I I figured out already that's my higher self because I because I listen to um, listen listen yeah listen. If you are aware that you're communing with your higher self, that's all you you're supposed to be doing right now. Okay. Is getting the answers from your higher self because you okay. can't lie to you. Okay. Okay. So yeah. be aware of that. Right. Let me let let me finish with her, and um, okay. um, you, you can shoot me a uh, inbox message. If you got any more questions? Um, so I sent you the inbox message on because it said it say add a comment and it says open. Oh, um. So, 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 what's the page that you want? This my, this my um sick eight page. It, it's called O P P E N. No, I don't know what that is. It's yeah, the sick eight. So, okay. So, how do I send you a message? Just go to the messenger and pull and pull my um, page up. Go to the the messenger. I, how do I do that? Because I only see. The only thing I see well, right, right now, now is, right now we in the vi we in the video live, <laughs> and um, this is not a this is not a closed call. It's on my okay. page. Okay, okay. So they so so they call me Hero. You know what I mean? That's my name, Hero. So when you see um that I I I, I message you, you know it's me. I answer you know all my, my, I answer all, I'll answer all my messages as long as I don't got to write no paragraphs. <laughs> I'm. T I don't like that shit. I don't like. But I, I want yeah. to thank but you, But let me let me let me okay. get back to her. Okay. And okay. Shoot me a shoot me an inbox. I will. Okay. Thank you, brother. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, my question. Um, <laughs> my bad, sweetie. 
<laughs> my question was about a dream that I had. Uh, well, two dreams, but they like coincide. Um, I always had like real vivid dreams. Sometimes I have dreams and I wake up like happy or sad from my dreams. Or if I have like a dream that I don't like, I'll just wake myself up from it. But this dream stuck out to me and I don't like remember all of it, but the part that stuck out to me. So I had a dream. My brother is locked up right now. Um, and I had a dream that we were standing in front of like our childhood home. And he told me that he was going to the stars on January 22nd. So this is last year. I had a dream last year before January 22nd this year actually happened. And I remember hugging him and him crying. And to me, I interpreted like he was dying. Mind you, he in jail at this time. So I interpreted like he was dying, um, but he's fine. So January 22nd come around this year. And after that date, I had a dream that I had another dream. And in that dream, I told him about the first dream. I told him I had a dream about you. And you told me you was going to the stars on January 22nd. And um, he gave me a hug. And he told me like he got everything solved out. Or he got like he solved everything. And he's still in jail right now. And I don't know what it means. But it's just something that like stuck with me. That dream really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, uh, when he say he's going to the stars, it don't mean he's physically leaving anywhere. Mm -hmm. It can be something as simple as expanding his mind to consider the um, energy that the stars is sending to the earth. Right? So it, it could be as simple as he's trying to figure out the relationship that Earth has to the stars in his mind by you having a genetic tie to him, it'll put him pull on your energy if he's thinking deep enough and it could give come across as dream images because y'all connected to the same mother clock. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. When the last time you went to see him? I haven't been to see him. Maybe you should go see him. Mm -hmm. Did y'all beefed out? No, we don't got no um problem. He just locked up oh like out of state. I love my little brother. I took care of them as kids. Do you talk to him? Do we call uh, him? Yeah. Like through text. You know, they got the, the app that you yeah. like text. So. text. Yeah, he doing good. He fine. I haven't told him like about my dream or anything. Cause I didn't know what it meant, and I never had a dream where I told somebody about a dream I had in a dream. Mm -hmm. Those are uh, what you. Those are classes. Those are initiation rites, because they connected together over time. For you, initiation for you, for what? spiritual initiation to your. So whatever family line you own, mm -hmm. the two of y'all are like priest and princess or priestess and prince mm -hmm. for y'all family inheritance. And y'all have to go through a spiritual initiation to make you worthy to receive the inheritance. As he go through his shadow work in there, because nine out of 10, that's what he's doing. It's also clearing the way for you. It's like opening your path on the for the inheritance the same as he is. So y'all working like Gemini twins. What's the difference in y'all ages? He's 25. I'm 31. 25 or 26. And I just turned 31. So it's like five or six years. <laughs> five means turnaround. So yeah, if he's doing his shadow work, you can and be benefiting from it, but would show up as a stellar dream. Mm -hmm. Stellar meaning stars, the stars being active. And in the energy signature, the stars represent your ancestors on the family tree. The Christmas tree is lit up with the stars, meaning the people that stand out in your family. We use what nature shows us for the analysis. When we look in the sky at night, we see stars in the darkness. When we look at the 
in the darkness of the self, the family tree show us that we are the product of all of the stars that preceded us, meaning all of the other priests or prince or priestess and princes that rose from the family line. We are a continuation. So it's tying yourself to prime creation by using the energy of the stars as the map to determine um, how to become your greatest version of yourself. He's doing the shadow work. You reaping the benefit. Oh, okay. But, but you should pr probably um, go see him. Mm -hmm. You're getting a lot of that in the comments, and that's not haphazard. Mm -hmm. And the yeah could be a spiritual pilgrimage too it's like uh hansel finding gretel his hansel sister was lost in the in the wilderness and he got to find their way back home by you going to where he had touch him that might give him the passport to freedom because you the spirit energy of the feminine which gives him his protection he's the masculine in the uh, spirit realm, the women protect the men. In the physical realm, the men protect the women. It's a trade-off. So while he, he's fighting the spiritual wars, you reap all the benefit. Yeah, I'll be working. Yeah. The so it, the exchange, the energy exchange is when you go see him, you reciprocate the spirit work he do in the physical realm. It's a trade-off. Mm -hmm. And the more, and you give him encouragement to continue to spiritually develop, and in turn, it makes you flourish in your physical world because he's your physical protector, you his spirit protector. Y'all got to work together. Mm -hmm. Well, that's I'm glad you said that because my brothers they just not on the right path at all. You might. Be the passport to getting them on the right path. <clears throat> sometimes, sometimes your influence be so oh, great, but you don't, it. you don't always know it. Mm -hmm. You know, just your presence and a couple of encouraging words can go a long way to a guy in that condition. Believe me, I've been there. I'm gonna go see him. I'm sitting here with my husband, baby. When the, that, was, that was my only question. You sure? Okay. You got I'm any glad questions? you said that because I'd be worried about them. I mm -hmm. really do. And I'm glad it was not the opposite. Uh, he ain't your only brother that's locked up? It's eight of us. Uh, two of them is locked up. But I had it about, so it's four girls and four boys. I had it about the second oldest boy, the dream that I'm telling you about. Both so I come from a family of eight, four boys, four girls. <laughs> really? I've never met I'm, nobody. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm number seven. Oh, okay. I'm the fourth girl. So we came first and then it's the boys. That's why I always wonder was there something to that? I never met you don't meet big families nowadays and you definitely don't meet families like half and half. And the last two is a set of twins. So my last two brothers are twins. Yeah. So the spirit work you can by encouraging your brother works for all of y'all. Y'all are on a, a grateful eight format. What is that? So it says eight of y'all. Mm -hmm. The gratitude y'all give and showing support for each other is what heals y'all families generational curses. Mm -hmm. It's a grateful eight behind the sacred eight ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's okay. how yeah, that's how that's how you make your family okay, so what all you really trying to do in the physical world is make the family be closer. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm the one if you take charge of that. Try to always bring us together and have all the holidays. Like I'm the one to do everything. Mm-hmm. Cause you're gonna be the big mama when you get old. Yeah, I feel like so that's you, 
<laughs> you 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 start now getting them conditioned early for the family to fall under one household during special events like holidays, mm -hmm. right? It don't even a holiday. I'm always trying to yeah. Just, what well, whatever yeah. it is, you conditioning the family to always come to you. Yeah, you building so. This, that's what that's how you know that you would be a positive influence for your brother mm -hmm. for him to look up and see you do wonders for him mm -hmm. I try to talk to them but I just feel like it don't it don't seep in I mean I know stuff seep in even when you don't see it but I just feel like their minds are so gone they look, just leave the yep, message yep, I'm hard headed and nope I don't learn mm -hmm. but I I heard everything my mama said when she thought I was, was being hard-headed and I wasn't learning. I was learning like a motherfucker. I just yeah. had to get past my determination to do what the fuck I want to do when I want to do it, take the advice and make the wiser move. See, I had to get that young, fiery bull energy out first mm -hmm. in order for me to relax into my older, more wiser view of the world. Mm -hmm. And the perception change allows me to walk a smoother path versus always in the upheaval at drama at every turn because I can't control my fists or my temper. Yeah, that's another thing. Even <laughs> one of them, the younger two, the two, they, they cool, but the, the second two, they, they really got anger. I mean, even as kids, I mean, I know we had a rough childhood, but they, they can't control themselves. They both don't got anger problems. Mm -hmm. And I'll be worried about them because of it. Right. So the conversation you having with your brother is his ability to evolve into a higher self, a better version of itself. That's the fact that somebody tells him it's all right to be a better self Sometimes, because we don't give each other permission to do that because we don't know that it can change somebody's life. It's okay to, to be a better version of yourself. I'm going to support you in changing for the better. We, mm -hmm. we don't hear that from people that we care about. To hear that, that makes us feel more, um, more responsible to be a better version of ourselves for the people that love us and care about us and come see us when we lock the fuck down. Mm -hmm. And I got right. out that way, neither. The way you said it, it's more easy to yep. receive. Yep. It's so, like, some people just want somebody they love to give them permission to be better. And we are never mm -hmm. know it because they're not going to say, I need your permission for me to do better. They'll just look get you with puppy dog eyes yeah waiting on you to recognize that all they need is your permission to do better yeah it's okay for you to do better you don't you don't have to be part of the revolving door recidivism cycle of young black males as they call us mm -hmm. you can be part of the ex entrepreneurs and get out and build a business because they used the time they was down to learn the business they want to the degree where they can't fail when they get out. Yeah. That encouragement to them dudes that's in there. I mean, I talked to a lot of them and I gave them the permission to be their best self because I didn't know what to do to help them. All I could tell them is, man, if I could do anything, I'd like for you to be your best self. And a lot of them wrote me back from the streets you know, uh, appreciative that I told them because nobody had never told them that. So when I talk to people that got people locked up, I let them know this. Sometimes just to hear you give them permission, it's all right for you to be a better version of yourself. It's all right for you to be part of a better class of people because read the Count of Monte Cristo. He started off in prison, but they couldn't tell he wasn't royalty when he was masquerading as a prince or as a count. Mm -hmm. Because it's in the character. And that's, that's the love that we exchange that mm -hmm. helps us continue to, because the, the generational curse breaking is 
is rooted in us patching the family binds, the fruits of the tree with the binds of love, exchanging it freely. And Grat I'm sorry. Gratitude for it and happy to give it. I'll be feeling like they need that from my parents, but I know they can't get it from them. And Remember I mean, this. Like, I'm the one that they look up to. I'm the one that took care of them when they was kids. So you the parent, by, you the accumulation of both parents in one person. Yeah, I'm about that whole child. <laughs> right. That's 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 why you have all of the functions and stuff. Because you making up by you making up for it, even if they hear they'll eventually see where they can be better. You'll end up affecting them by being you. Yeah, my husband laughing because this is what he be telling me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. When you being your best self and the woman greatest energy the state to be in is mother, wife, housekeeper, right? That energy that she's in as a mother nurturer, wife nurturer, and the housekeeper part is just her using up the excess nesting energy that comes with feeling that way about her children and her husband. Mm-hmm. Right, she'll start nesting. They say it's OCD, but it's not. It's you living in your love energy. You create the feng shui of the environment, and that's what make your husband come home to heaven on earth. And we won't want to be nowhere else. Fuck that big booty bitch down the street. <laughs> <laughs> that's that make you not want to go nowhere else because mm -hmm. you living in that in that prime attractive that's the most attractive and alluring hypnotic energy for a man is a woman to be in her what mother wife mode when she in that energy he don't want to be nowhere else and she creating heaven for him that sacred place mm -hmm. that, like some women think it's slick and yeah, 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 that's not what he's looking for he can figure out 98% of the problems of the world if you can sit in a, in a peaceful and comfortable environment. And that, that's how y'all come up together. Mm -hmm. oh, we started we from the bottom. The whole no, plan here. started from the bottom. He <laughs> yeah. The 19, yeah. We in mm -hmm. our 30s now. We really mm -hmm. came from nothing together. Yeah, so that peace that you generate in that mode and being a good sister facilitates you being that at home even better. Mm -hmm. You know, because no, the, as the big sister, you take on the role of the parents that was dysfunctional when they, when y'all was born and you learn from they dysfunction, how to be functional. And me and my sister always say that we learn from our parents what not to do. Because they know yeah. what to do. Yeah. And, and sometimes the default lesson of what not to do is more um, beneficial than teaching you what to do. We didn't come in this motherfucker with no handbook, but we can write one now. Mm -hmm. We can write one to pass on to the next parents that want to try to figure out how to not let the system consume their child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're never supposed to be you supposed to be in the system but not of the system. The system is supposed to give you benefit. You're not supposed to benefit the system. Mm -hmm. You the pr yeah. prize. The system is the facilitator to you attaining the payout of the prize that you are. Use mm -hmm. it to your advantage. You sound like my husband. We we had a son uh, my son just turned three so we had him three years ago. And a lot of people like look up to us how we raise him. They're like, "Oh, he's so smart. He's so this and so that." But it's because we don't we don't follow the system. Yeah, and that's what I be trying that's to tell them. Y'all do with y'all kids what they tell y'all to do. We treat ours completely different. Yeah, so that's that's from learning from the errors of the ones before you, so you don't have to repeat that dumbass shit. <laughs> Who told them that the only way to get a child to cooperate is to whip their ass like they on a plantation? 
<laughs> that's the most archaic shit when you understand that children know how to think and if you facilitate them thinking by having thoughtful conversation they'll be able to tell you anything you need to know in short order i know some two, two years old that can tell you all their mama business <laughs> sound like my son <laughs> he yeah. just start when he started that was it mm. he can say everything and yeah, that's great. so because you think you'd be talking yeah and uh that also your dream about your brother could be um like a recognition of telepathic communication yeah that's what my husband was saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because when you first start turning it on you try to talk to the people that you think got a strong enough sympathy to you to hear you and that could, mm -hmm. could have been why when you told him he hugged you in the second dream because he's saying damn i can communicate well yeah, he hugged me in both dreams mm -hmm. the, first but time the, he was the second dream time. was in response to you mm -hmm. talking about the first one mm -hmm. yeah. twin pillars yeah mm -hmm. i always mm -hmm. as a kid i always dreamed about certain members of my family over and over again and I'm like, is we thinking about each other or something? Because I'm always dreaming about you. You might have, you might be the one with the most sympathetic link to all of them, mm -hmm. right? Because oh, you got to remember, in our native culture, in our native culture, uh, a lot of the times the mother couldn't couldn't perform the work. She passed the work to the big sister, the one that she felt was most capable. And in the spirit work, we've been taught to be spiritually confused. So if you start to straighten out your perception of the world view physically, mentally, and spiritually, your parents can surrender the responsibility of you to guide the rest of the children that you are the big sister to. <laughs> Damn. That's heavy as shit. Yeah, that is heavy as shit. <laughs> But I've always felt like I've had that responsibility, yeah. so. That means you've been training for, for all of the time you've been aware. You've been training. So now you time to activate the training by taking on the responsibility, and the payout is unbelievable. It's a lot of us to get on with. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't got no small family. It's a lot of us to get. We need to get our minds right. Just start with one. Mm -hmm. Does each one teach one? When you feel like you taught that one, then pick another one. <laughs> and guess what? When you pick the second one, the first one going to pick one to teach. Mm-hmm. Let's see, each one teach one tag scenario. You ain't even have to tell him. As you learn, he's going to pick somebody that he want to tell the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You already don't. So by default, you have to tell somebody who don't know because you're mm -hmm. teaching it to him. see him you gonna have me have a conversation with him this morning he's gonna be like where's this coming? where's this have coming that, from this is too have much have that this conversation have, have that conversation that's tribal talk mm -hmm. that's building family minds stronger have that talk make him say that shit have, have that talk i will yeah, it's gonna benefit the whole family, not just him and you. Mm -hmm. It's contagious. Mm -hmm. It's the power of love, and the family unit is a unit of strong love connections. Mm -hmm. And the more you have them, the more people want to be part of your family. <laughs> <laughs> All you told me was you got a big job ahead. <laughs> you got a big job ahead. You go get it done. I could have told you that, but it's not as big as it sound in the beginning because 
when you get to the other side of it, too, like, it was the most joyous job I ever did in my life. I didn't even feel like I was working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for answering my question. I'm going to get somebody else one. <laughs> okay. You're welcome, sweetie. Yeah. Tell your husband, I say peace to the God. There you go. <laughs> peace <laughs> to the God. <laughs> You the goat, yeah. Uncle Rob. You the goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll talk to y'all later. All right. All right. Let's we'll see if it let her in. So I've been trying to let different people win, but it only lets certain ones. Hey, sweetie, how you doing? Hey, Chief Pontiac, how you doing? I'm good. good. You looking like Black Girl Magic. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, thank you. Good to see you. Mm-hmm. What's on your mind today? Okay, okay so I had two questions. Um, one, I really wanted to know about, like, did you have any information on anxiety lines? Because it's, I read a book about it, and I know it connects with, like, the Merkaba and the chakras. Um, and the, I know the anxiety lines also connect with the grids. It's, like, our connection with the grids. Um, and my second one is about... So I've been getting these downloads and meditation lately, and they've been heavy. So I know last time I spoke with you, it was talking about how, you know, you mentioned with her how she might be royalty, like princess and prince, um, I guess in the galaxy, you would call it. But my last download was telling me about, like, where I came from. And it was, I got this download talking about Sirius C. You know, they don't talk much about Sirius C. But Sirius C is there. The scientists have tried to debunk it. And in my download, I was being told that it's kind of like how Wakanda is and how they masked or, like, clothed themselves so no one could find them. And so I also seen that Sirius C is, like, the only one out of the whole trio that has a satellite that revolves around it. And so I, I was looking that up, and I seen how the satellite has like a name that's like called the women's ground and Sirius C has a name that's linked to it. And it's like, it's all about matriarchal and like it being a matriarch. Um, And that's like what I see when I got the download telling me that our Royal clan is like, it's a matriarch. So yeah, those are my two questions. I know that was loaded. (laughs) Okay. The first one is which lines did you say? The Nazca lines? The, the exact, um, which land mass? Um, I don't know. Is okay with the lines. It's not a land mass. They're like connected to the grids, and so we have our fingertips, and each fingertip is a line, and like the fingertips has. Oh, this you, okay. So you talking like? Yeah. So you talking about like those uh uh acupressure lines? And acupoint lines, and you asked yeah, and you asked me if they was connected to what? There, in the book I was reading, like it, the book was talking about how to tap into the Merkaba, and like you know how we do astral travel. We all know we just tap into it, but it's like more of a focused way of being able to tap into it, like you walking into a ship and connecting to these grids, and they showed like the grid that had the dove the grid that's like the lion, Um, but it's like our fingertips, they kind of, they have these frequency lines that connect to our chakras, and Mm -hmm. it has this way of like, yeah. So the mudras, the mudras is how you activate them. Okay. That's how you activate the energy in your fingers. The macabre is when you um, convert your form into a light body. And the mm-hmm, right. um, torsion field gives the appearance of it shining like a pyramid inside of a pyramid. What we call 
call it the star of life. That's because when you start to activate the Merkaba, the platonic energy is the double triangle, two triangles interlocking. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the book was heavy on how you connect those two triangles. Um, yeah. Yeah. So in the energy field of the body, when you are in the auric field, above your head is a pyramid facing down, and below your feet is a pyramid facing up. Mm -hmm. And by going through certain spiritual initiation rites, you are able to draw them in at the same time in order to generate the energy field that produces what appears to be the Merkaba. But it's a condensation of the energy field around the body to the point where it becomes visible to the naked eye. And those who learn, those who learn levitation the Merkaba body is so light that it can move at the speed of thought. So it appears if you fluxing in and out of reality, but you really moving so fast, you can go to another destination almost instantly. That's when we were operating at our highest level as a being, as a light body being. Yeah, yeah. It speaks the a lot about that. Right. The separation came in by making us focus on the physical body to the point where we can't distinguish the self, the light body, from the physical body, which is the, the glue is the ego that holds the two together. The ego is your uh, externally perceived perception of the self accepted by the self. And that's what make you identify so much with the body that you can't tap into your macabre because the separation in the two pyramids is a gap that can't be bridged in the physical body alone. You can't go to a job and work on building your macabre with stones. Mm -hmm. Your macabre is a spiritual um, device developed by high spiritual teachings and training. Most people in the current era is too lazy to ever do the type of work required to activate yes. a Merkaba. That book really went into like how it's real extensive work. And I even started to like memorize like each fingertip, it connects with the um, chakra and how it like, it's like a spaceship, like you said, it lights up so that you can instantly travel to where you want to be and like the certain fingertips and like you said the mudras will connect with certain grids it's like it's almost like codes you know like it the is. spirits are codes. see what most of us uh forgot a long time ago was that the physical body is the earth rover for the spirit body mm -hmm. it's a mechanical device organic matrix makeup right and because we forgot, we believe we the body to the point that it makes us dread death. Instead of realizing that we wore the macabre out or we not we wore the avatar out, now we have to change suits. Yeah, yeah. The book speaks a lot about that also, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish yeah. I could the names for you that they called Sirius C in the satellite that revolves around it because like I instantly thought of you and how you speak about the matriarch and then when you were telling the last lady or sister that you know in the galaxies the woman protect the man and my downloads was saying like everything up here is a matriarch like everything up here is a matriarch so, so that's why it's our job as men the wise men anyway we want to see the women um in incarnate that energy right because it gives us a different type of satisfaction of manhood when we are surrounded by those divinely feminine women mm -hmm. they make us become greater right so we can be smart intelligent hard working and all that shit but if we don't have the favor of the divine feminine and then we only got the favor of 
low vibrational um, selfish entities masquerading as the divine feminine, we can only reach so high. But when the divine feminine latch on to you and bring other divine, divine they pushing you up higher in the ranking, in the spiritual ranking system. And they give you assignments that proves who you are spiritually. And it makes more and more of that divine feminine energy willing to be seen on earth. So this is why they're trying to cloud the waters with uh, transsexuals. Because they want the waters to be murky. And they believe that the divine masculine won't be able to tell the difference. But we can smell the motherfuckers a mile away. Right, because the women that support us are highly intuitive and all of that psychic energy, they can't deceive us. Right. Right. But the low vibrational guys that think they masculine become fodder for that shenanigan. Right. Right. Because they trying to dominate more than develop. They trying to to spread domination, masculine domination upon everybody they encounter. And sex is their weapon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they become more susceptible to those other things that I don't want to parse that shit. Yeah. Um, it was crazy too because in the download I was getting that um you know, I have a cousin who's here and she's a girl and she was like always like into tag along where I went, but she always had like this love hate relationship with me. Um, and she would like do things like to sabotage me, like gossip. And I would hear about it like from schools away, like we were different schools and people would tell me like, that's your cousin. She's not okay. But in the down low, I was getting like upstairs, she was a gay guy and on earth and our school circle in our soul group she incarnated as a woman but she just didn't know how to navigate womanhood but in the galaxy she will always admire um admire how you know i was a woman and that womanhood but it reminded me of like woman king you know how he has the um the helping hand i mean i don't know if he was transgender you couldn't call that but he was like queer in the way he dressed and like you know he was playing yeah, Who's a eunuch? A eunuch. Okay, so. Hmm. It's a male that's been castrated. So, right. is it their role to dress feminine? Like to take on that feminine role because of being a eunuch? Sometimes that's the reason they was made into a eunuch. So they couldn't reproduce oh. that feminine masculine oh. energy. So if a little boy walk around acting like a girl, they don't want him to have, have children. They'd make him a eunuch. Wow, okay. Wow, that makes so much sense. Yeah, that was uh, ancient cultures. A lot of ancient cultures around the world um, done that. Yeah, no, maybe like... Yeah, because... They found that later in life, a lot of those dudes that started off feminine as a youth um, became homosexuals, and then they tried to become heterosexuals and make, make babies, right? Oh. So they they wanted to stop them from reproducing. Is it because of how the children would be raised, or is it because something spiritually would be passed to the children? All of the above. Uh, they didn't want the boys to have a feminine role model. And they didn't want the girls to have a feminine male role model. It was a cultural uh, call from the era. In this era, um, they support all of the shenanigans of a guy having a boyfriend and a girlfriend at the same time. That's not natural. Yeah. Right. 
but it's promoted in the culture we in because it was part of a war effort to subjugate the people. One of the ways to prevent the royalty from being worthy to rule is to rupture the root chakra. So they was raping the boys. Anyone wow. of them they thought was a chief, was going to be a chief, they was raping them. At the first chance they got. That's why molestation was so rampant with in these families. He's trying to ru ruin the child so they'll never come to the trauma so great they can't come to a self-awareness of they rightful positions in life and who they are because mm -hmm. the shame the guilt uh for the girls and the ruptured root chakra for the boys is all war effort it was military subjugation of a people it was done on purpose it wasn't an accident just like the gay agenda is not an accident just like pedo wood is not an accident all that shit designed to oppress yeah. And the more of it that goes on, the more that we don't want to be here. Mm. And the more we don't want to be here, the stronger they grip was getting on the planet. Because we, we won't fight against them taking over because we don't want to participate in the bullshit. So they knew that. So they can do it more and more and more in the name of a dollar. The dollar was the cover story. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I've always, you know, looked at as gay men as like, I, because you know, I feel like they instinctively know like what womanhood means, like what it means to be a woman in matriarch and they so badly want to be in that space because I don't know, like, First of all, manhood, like you said, is being used in a corruptive way, like the patriarchal to dominate. Yeah. And so when you look at the priests of Rome, the garb they wear is came out of the um, house of Isis. They wear all, all of the feminine garb, but the colors is reversed. The, the, the great mother is supposed to wear black. The Pope wears white. Mm -hmm. The priestesses of the noon is supposed to wear white, but the nuns wear black. I remember that post you put up. I remember when you talked about that, yeah. How it's flipped. Yeah. That was because they usurped the throne. That's why the Pope's seat sit under the seat of the Great Mother. He's usurping the throne. That's what they call in Hebrew, Yaqabim, the supplanter. The underminer. Those are the so called Israelites, the Hebrews, the ones that crossed over. They crossed over from the other side of the Tigris and Euphrates to infiltrate Kemet. That's how they get the name Ibri. Ibri meaning the cross over. Ibri became Hebrew when it's transliterated into English. Right? It's Hebrew. Hebrews are those Abrahamic religions from Babylon, right? And those Abrahamic religions from Babylon are the religions that teach you to follow the rites of Ninersin. Ninersin was one of the sons of Enlil, who they call the God of Sin, which is those corrupted practices used to keep the frequency of the minds of the people at low vibration. They call sin rites, Babylonian blood magic, Babylonian money magic, and Babylonian sex magic. When you try to dominate a planet, you dominate the people by using those three tactics, right? And this, this is why they cut us off from our wealth, right? They can't do nothing with it but stop us from getting it until we realize who we is. And then they gave us monopoly money as a uh, fodder in the illusion of trading and commerce. All the time we being lied to and deceived. And the inflation is decreasing the value of the monopoly money on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. It's military 101. Control the resources of a people when you can control the people. But as soon so as we really... Yeah. 
As soon as we realize what's going on, we can stand up against it. Okay. Um, so, can we talk about seriously? Because I just feel like yeah. you know. So the the uh, Dogon told the scientists about Sirius B and C. Mm -hmm, right. I seen that. Yeah. Right. It's, it's in their literature, and it is a matriarchal world that is the satellite of Sirius C, right? right? The Sirius constellation is the home of Anubis or Anpu. Oh, what's that? Can you repeat that? <laughs> you buffering. I was trying to but let it stop buffering so you hear. Yeah. So the the whole thing about the, the the matriarchy, Earth is a matriarchy. It's a matriarchal planet, but it's being dominated by a rogue group of patriarchs. Mm, right. right. The false guys. So the the feminist women they don't realize that the power the patriarchs offer them is artificial. It's just another way for the patriarchs to stay in control. The matriarchy, the patriarchs will have to follow the, basically the laws of nature. And the whole patri matriarchy is geared around raising functional children to be functional adults, whereas the patriarchy is geared around the control and the resources to control the people. It's a different dynamic at play. The resources controlled under matriarchy is what takes care of the children. The children get fed first in the matriarchy. In the patriarchy, the father get fed first. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. right. And when you're dealing with a family that's both, everybody's sit down together and all, all the food is on the table. Pass the potatoes please. Oh, they kicked her out. <laughs> I'm going to take one more call, y'all. I'm starting to wear down now. See, let him in. Give him a few minutes. They'll let him in. I'm gonna try to let somebody else in. I'm gonna try not to let two people in at the same time again. It was, that was a mess. Okay, so wait a minute. So let him let him in. I don't know. I guess Instagram got pics on who they want me to talk to and who they don't want me to talk to. Hey. hey. I'm driving. How are you? Peace to you guys. Where have you been? Man, Hermie Mode. <laughs> like you? Hermie Mode, like you? I, I sure been in Hermie Mode. Big Mama had me sitting down. Chief Wars gave me a day pass. Oh, I'm supposed to be sitting down. I'm not really. I'm not really doing it 100%. That may be a message for a lot of people. Like, there's a lot of shit that you know you're supposed to be doing, and you're not really doing it. You're faking it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not faking it, but I'm doing some stuff. But it, uh, Divine Mother and Father wants me to do stuff in the world now. You know. What trying you to figure mean? it out. Okay, so what did they tell you they want you to do in the world? Maybe you can help me. I don't know. I feel like it's, I think that it has something to do with music. Um, and my, some of my um, you gifts are growing. Like music? I freestyle more so than anything. Do hip hop or? More r and I Sometimes I might rap. Sometimes I might do a country bop. 
but it really depends like what spirit so this is your self challenge challenge yourself write an album i've been thinking about doing the mixtape look all you got to do is gonna make the album flow the al album title every song in the album is can be related to the title yes so that's right. interesting because i've been thinking about the titles of each album so so let's say if it was back to high school and then you all of your songs is reminiscing about one of your years in high school mm -hmm. when i first got my driver's license song <laughs> my first my first homecoming party yeah right when i graduated as homecoming queen <laughs> You know, man, when I was you, I was a loner you, in high school. Yeah, but when you writing a when you writing an album, you can write it from the perspective of anybody that's in high school: the loner, the popular kid, the cheerleader, the quarterback. You can write your song from any angle. The that's only thing you want to know is what story do you want the quarterback to tell? Right. So I'm trying not to make so my music i don't want to identify with pain anymore i made a lot of music when i was in my hot girl summer saying city girls <laughs> i made a lot of music I, I had a lot of music taken from me that was created when i was in a negative space and i realized how intense that frequency is and how it affected a lot of things so definitely the music now is going to be a bit different but I wanted to ask you about Lumeria and Hathor. Um, so some of my gifts have been growing and I am working on not being fearful, but I don't really have a tribe. So when I'm sharing online, I don't know if I'm sharing too much or too little or not, but Hathor has been calling out to me a lot. And Isis also, I think they're connected with each other. Um, Isis and who? Hathor. Hathor, yeah. So Hathor is the heir to the Isis seat. Het Heru is her name in Kemet. <clears throat> and she is the female heir to the Isis seat. Heru is the male heir to the Osiris seat. Okay. okay. Right. So when you know the connection of Het Heru or Hathor, to Isis is it's her firstborn daughter, heir to the throne on the matriarchal side. When you understand that the queens make kings, then you understand how Heru need both his big sister and his mama to bless him as the prince or as the king, from prince to king. Mm -hmm. So when you look in the hieroglyphs, you see the image of the boy king receiving his kingdom by his sister holding up his right arm and his mother holding up his left arm, meaning that he's won uh, um, the inheritance from both sides of the family. The mother is the one who okays him on his left side. That's the mother line. And the big sister is the one who okays him to receive the father's blessing as um, the Prince on the father line. Okay. Okay. So that's why they so tightly connected. You rarely see Isis with another female other than Hathor or Het Heru. Should I be sharing some of the information and downloads and uploads or downloads that I'm getting about ancient Kemet and some of the mm -hmm. like I don't know how much I'm supposed to be sharing. Share how much what you want to share okay if you feel the urge to share it the universe is telling you to put it out there if you feel it in the urge to keep something to yourself the universe is telling you not to share it at least not right now it might come out later okay but you can't share too much because if people can benefit and grow from it that's only contributing to our awakening as a collective I and everybody has to do their best as they can with what they know. I guess I'm in the process of just releasing the fear, you know, because it's like, 
um i think a lot we've been hiding a lot like a lot of us that are yeah have been yeah. hiding for a long yeah. time um and especially with with the fear of being deceived or being infiltrated yeah um because of what happened so long ago and how how swell they did it and so i just i wanted to say earlier too like as 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 we're coming into these away awarenesses of like the ancient magic and the merkaba i didn't really get to tap in too much but as you guys and as we come into this sacred knowledge in order for us to be grounded within our etherical body and our physical body and not lose our minds we have to meditate you have to meditate and it looks different for everybody i'm struggling i'm struggling with the routine and the discipline but i just want to share that so because what happens is if you're not grounded and you open yourself up you open yourself up and you're vulnerable so, so i just wanted to share that too the thing about meditation is you are exploring the limits of your own mind mm -hmm. and you don't even know it because mm -hmm. when you allow the mind to relax and be itself it's like water it's trying to get back to source and the only way for it to do that is to draw itself to a higher level of consciousness so it starts to expand the mind that's called a transcendental meditation when you uh find out that you can do something called kinetic meditation where you can be functional mm. excuse me <clears throat> you can be functional in this world and at the same time doing a meditation while you performing a function yes sir i received that right yeah so you learn that through learning like tai chi yes, sir. i teach you to how to meditate and move at the same time also qigong qigong teaches you how to meditate and move at the same time that way you can go about your daily affairs and still get your meditation in in the middle of the day you don't have to sit still and stop your life to meditate Okay. I don't want to hold you because I know you've been giving so much energy, but don't be a stranger on here. Oh, I'm not. I don't, I don't know when the next time I'm going to be on here. I wasn't planning on coming back on you no know, social media till after January. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, it's a time of reflection. They have to go back because I didn't put so much information into the public domain. Some people got to go back to catch up. No, that's and if I. And if I keep doing videos on a regular basis, I'm just repeating information over and over that's already out there for them to review. Yes, that's a fact. That's what Spirit's been calling me to do too, is like, don't take another screenshot of another, another nothing. You need to go through all your screenshots, organize them from, from all the homeopathic remedies to all the spiritual remedies, to all the information about the history and everything, I need to sit down with a, a notebook and just write it down and organize it and get to it. Like writing it down is gonna imprint it in my mind for me to memorize it anyway. And you know, whether you're an audio visual learner or a doer where you have to learn it, it's gonna be imprinted. You have to exercise that muscle. So spirit's like, don't take another screenshot. <laughs> Don't don't post. And then another thing too is social media makes us feel like we're doing the work. Makes us feel like we're doing some type of work when we take a screenshot or when we post something on our stories or when we regurgitate something or even if we say a download and it's like the actual work is in the living. Yeah, you have to do the emotional and spiritual work, but you got to live after that. But every now and then you told to be still so that the energy oh, yes. can catch up. The energy, like has to, the energy has to catch up to you because yes, you can outwork the energy where when it do come in, it come in and knock you off your feet. Yeah. You know, well, it's like a... Come in and knock me off my feet. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not universe. <laughs> <laughs> you knock me off of my feet, not mama. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so right now a lot of people are um, benefiting from a lot of the information, especially these young, these young, these young lions roaring. They they not buying that slave ship bullshit no more. They not buy, They know who they is. They telling them they 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 peers, right? And now we at Event Horizon. Any minute now, something big is gonna pop off. That's going to show us what we've been doing in secret in the public. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, yeah. And now the convergence is, is real of the organic people because now we seeing, uh, Chief Warhorse calling for people, Ice Cube calling out people, right? Now remember, ice cube is a piece of water that's froze, right? So, so in, again, it got it takes it got it takes some heat to thaw out the ice, right? Right. So he out there, you know, putting it out, out there. He drawing the heat when he finally come with the bombshell because he laying the foundation for a bombshell announcement that he have. You know, but he got to start saying them gatekeepers' names for protection. And if he don't start saying their names, they're going to try to send somebody undercover at him, one of them secret assassins. Right. He put their name out there. Now, motherfucker, know who they is. If something happened to Cube, we know who to go get. Like, like, what do you mean, say, say their name? Like, say whose name? The gatekeepers that he called in out. Instead of being subliminal, just say it. Just flat out say their name. Because if he don't say their name, we don't know who to get if something happened to him. If he say their name, we know exactly who to go touch. And half of California want him to say their names because they the ones that want to go get them motherfuckers. Yeah. Let them touch Q. You ain't never seen Cali stand up. Let them motherfuckers do something to Ice Cube. Yeah. You're going to see Bloods and Crips and Lokes all together, bikers, all that shit. They not buying that shit. They know what time it is. The tribe's on the move. Yeah, that's why they bringing in the alien stuff. Like, well, one thing is that they want to further separate, you know, ye are God. So, you know, certain things in our anatomy make us certain things, you know. And so if they start to, if they start to instill fear when the rescue is about to happen, it's like, you won't know who's your real savior. Not like that, but like, who's your real partner in this health game? So they just trying to figure out which way to kind of maneuver the fear tactic, really. Mm -hmm. But now we telling them the ones that look like us that's misleading the people, clearly how to identify them. See, if they mislead them and they don't know no better, we can teach them. But if they're doing it on purpose, we can get rid of them. Exactly. So, so what? Okay. So, what do you think about judging people by the color of their spirit and soul? You know, by their heart and by their spirit, by their character, as opposed to the color of their skin. How do you feel about that? Look, it's twelve daughters of ISIS. That's the major earth tribes, 12 daughters of Isis. They got all different skin colors and all different hair textures. You have some of them that's coal black with straight hair, and you got some of them that's pale white with afros and everything in between. The problem is, is these hate doctrines have us looking for excuses to dis to dislike other people that keeps us further divided right i know some 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 pink people that i go to war with before i take anybody that look like me me too i'm i'm starting to meet some and that's what's really getting me it's like 
you know, I've seen people who are stubborn and egotistical, they look just like me, and I've seen them that, who look different, you know, so I'm starting to see, like, the human nature in it all, and it really being about the individual's actions, you know, mm -hmm. and their actions mm -hmm. tell you where their heart and their mind is, the heart and the mind is connected, and that's the, that's the spirit, you know, that they're holding within them. One of the things that us over here are uh, not aware of, it was white girl magic that kicked the Moors out of Europe. Exactly, because they were jealous of the melanated goddesses. And so even though it's the no, they, right now... They, no, no, you know, no. You got you to gotta know who came over here to usurp us to understand what I'm telling you, the magnitude okay. of it. The Moors came over here as conquistadors. English, Dutch, French, and Portuguese. They paint whitewash history because they the ones that's the free white persons in law. They came over here because they got kicked out of Europe. Now remember, they say the more civilized Europe. Why would you kick out your civilizers? What was they doing? Go look at the statuary of Rome. They was fucking the babies drinking blood so white girl magic kicked them out of europe first before they came over here with that bullshit with columbus okay they, they kicked them out for the same reason we trying to get rid of them parasitic right. ass motherfuckers we, when they use pale faces to block the institutions we call the people that already whooped their ass over here to give aid and assistance to us, and they was pale faces. Because Big Mama said, if they're going to block the institutions with the pale face, overrun the institutions with friendly pale faces, and that's how you beat them at their own game. Right. So go back to the early 1900s, you'll see all of these pale faces putting their secrets out in the public. Your know, Charles Russell for the Jehovah's Witness, Joseph Rutherford, Yo, Mary Baker Eddy, yo, Madame Blavatsky, yo, Alistair Crowley, yo, Franz Bardon, yo, Manly P. Halls, they all putting their secrets out in the open so we can get free. Right? If we don't overrun their institutions with friendly pale faces, we will never know what these motherfuckers doing in secret. But, but they still pushing the divide and conquer race doctrine. Yeah. Yep, and Jordan Maxwell was very instrumental. He was the one who made the clearest understanding of the admiralty jurisdiction masquerading as our government. Right? right? So when we're looking at these people, we got to realize all of them people wasn't against us. It was more of them with us than it was against us. Yep, Anton LaVey. The Church of Satan. See, we ain't going to, yep, Dolores Cannon. All these pale faces that was coming to help us to get free from the same motherfuckers that was raping their babies and drinking their baby blood they kicked out of Europe. Now, we didn't already been displaced from our castles to go fight in the Gullah Wars. So we call for the people that whoop their head. What y'all do? Call so, <laughs> yeah. So when 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 they all gay when when all of the so called white witches um, was telling us the nature secrets that Big Mama taught them, you got to go back to the Salem witch hunts. The Big Mamas of this land was coaching them white girls, getting burnt up at the stake for telling them how to use yoni magic to heal the earth. So is it fair to think that even in the 400 years of slavery, the atrocity that the melanated people experienced, that uh, we have white brothers and sisters also experience the same thing at the same damn time? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the slave narrative was derived from the Moors bringing pale-faced slaves over here with them. They wasn't bringing Negroes from Africa. They was bringing pale people from Europe, Mongolians from the wars with the Huns and the Mongols, and Vedics. These are the ones that they passed off as Native Americans to sign contracts as if they was us. We didn't 
believe in selling the land. Had they not written the Constitution in the blood of Crispus Atticus to put us into this conjure war, they never would have been able to be here this long. Right. It was a 200 year, um, uh, 200 year conjure under the George Washington challenge. In the end of 200 years, does you gonna know what side of the ocean you from? So now they got everybody geared to tell us that we from Africa, but we was already here. I tell them my fucking a minute. I'm miss I'm red Mississippi clay dirt walking. See, and I think that I think another reason why America is so open to all of the other countries, like you know, telling them to to bring their disabled and all of these other things here, and all of you know, selling them an American dream is because when you come to a new world and you don't know the language and you don't have the education, you can be you can be programmed in a way in whatever way they want you to. And then if you're not really connected to where you are from, then you can be further lost in the confusion, like as well. So you also have to review the epithets that America is known as the great melting pot, the land, of the milk and honey, God's country, right? Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. So with, with you saying the melting pot, I felt like I, I was thinking that before all this, like in ancient committed times, it had already been that. Is that some, fair to say? Yeah. It's always, America's always been the place where the world sent their orphans. This is why when they came over here, we had every shade already here because we already been taking orphans of the world in to the tribes over here. And they took our kindness to mean we was weak and they launched attacks on multiple fronts. Then they, they tell the story of, of what we did as fiction, and they tell the story of what they done as great conquests. Right. Right. So this is how you know when they land and when they ain't. They said the Caliphia Queens was made up. Caliphia Queens was a matriarchal council that governed the entirety of west of the Rocky Mountains from Alaska all the way to Hawaii and the Samoan Islands. And they had a castle where uh, Alcatraz is that the Spanish Armada bombed. Bound, See, we don't, like spellbound or? Right. Then they turned it into a military outpost. And that, that's why on the maps they paint uh, California as an island but the island was Alcatraz. And the castle replica is the Disney castle that you see on all of the Disney movies. Because they built a replica on land after the fact to commemorate the castle that was destroyed on the island. But we ain't supposed to have that much awareness of our culture to put the pieces back together. Right. Right, the Chiquita Banana Lady was the Hawaiian Califia Queen. She was the one who was their delegate to the Queen's Council in, on the island, right? And they had women warriors that protected it because they didn't want the men interfering with the women doing their business with the children, right? right? The men had a different role to play under, the, under that matriarchy. Yeah, they some slime balls. Yeah. Then they told us yeah. it was a fictitious story. Right. But <laughs> they weren't counting on it, feeling the feeling of it being real for us, <laughs> reawakening something within us. Yeah. Not too sure. Yeah, that's the story of Wonder Woman. It's the same fucking story. A lot of us don't remember when they first drew Wonder Woman originally was a black lady. Right? She was melanated because that was the Califia Queens. They usurped her because they was trying to whitewash the, the hero image. It's all, it's, but it's still going to, the white lady's going to tell you the same as the black ladies about, 
about the matriarchy. When you get done, you can't have heaven on earth without a matriarchy. It won't functionally work. It'll be what we see now. All kind of military exploits, keeping the children always at war with their inner self so they can't never have a realization of their true self. The the matriarchy teach every child to be their best self. Right? And, and reinforce that across the whole village. When we recognize the talent, we encourage the child to cultivate the talent. They don't do that no more. Now, if you ain't playing basketball or football, they want you to sit your ass down somewhere. Ain't no respect for doctors and lawyers no more. Even though know, these ones that's in these positions now are being misled and miseducated to push somebody else's agenda, it's still, athlete is not, the, not supposed to be the go-to career to have. It was supposed supposed to have been for special people with exceptional talent. Literally. Now they turning that shit into something else. I don't know what they doing. Destroying the children with this shit. But we ain't supposed to say nothing. We supposed to just go along to get along. Got the wrong one here. I'm going to say something. I want to tear something up, but they keep telling me we brain banging. We ain't gang banging. And we shouldn't have to go to war. All we should have to do is assert our position collectively. Okay. Yeah, I saw something today that said um, we don't necessarily need more believers in God, but we just need the, the believers in God to act like it. Yep. That's, that's it right there. And once they realize realize that the first principle of everything is love, then we can move forward at, at light speed. And I be, I be like, I don't want to hear that love shit. I be the first one telling motherfucker, I don't want to hear all that love shit. We at war right now. You know what's but when the war, cool? when the war over, I want my war story to turn into a love story. Fuck the dumb shit. <laughs> Who want to be at war forever? I want my war story to turn into a love story. I want to go from motherfucking... Because you level up when you're in love. You feel invincible when you're in love. When you're in love, you take on every fucking day like it's a great day. Bring that you shit down. Good loving. You're like, you know what? Your mind start thinking different. Your energy start being different. You start feeling different. So that's why the first step is to really love yourself. Like, Love yourself first that you can really attract that real life love. Be honest with yourself first. You can't lie to yourself. You can lie to yourself first. God bless you. But you can't lie to the most high. So you wondering why you keep getting people. Bless you. You're wondering why you keep getting people who who shady and, and autumn and gradies is because you're not 100% in your light and in your truth. And that's why I'll be, I be hard for me to associate with certain people be like hell no i'm not, not going over there where y'all at y'all niggas retarded yeah that's yeah some of us are called mm. to be hermits and to pop out once in a while mm -hmm. but don't lose that i come out on a regular basis if i was going somewhere yeah <laughs> if i ain't going nowhere what, what the fuck i'm a I don't want to just be out there hanging around rogue people right. for no reason. Right. That's the thing. People like to go somewhere without a reason. Right, just to be outside or something. Yeah, that shit. Mm -mm. Why was he over there? He he got How he get shot? Why was he over there? I don't know what the fuck that dumb motherfucker was doing. I told him to take his ass over there. Right. He wanted to go, go see. I gotta go see. Let me go see. I don't need to see. <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat. I ain't that curious. I already can sense what's over there. I don't need to go. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's a fact. <laughs> Have them look, you know the word God, right? 
know, listen, I listen, 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 G-A-D. Now, here go the kicker. In English, the same word is God. <laughs> now, Gad mean a troop. A, a troop. troop? Like a group? Yeah. But if you say a troop, that's a military contingent. Right. Right. Now, this one of the children of Israel. So, so all of this time, we've been thinking, we've been talking about the creator. We've been talking about one of the children of Israel and God that we trust, right? So as long as we trust in God, his brother Levi, his brother Levi can issue a system of levies <clears throat> and liens in order for the Judas to judge us. It's all Contract is all in Leviticus. Okay. <laughs> Genesis and Leviticus. Okay. They tricked the shit out of us with that shit. Uh, oh, they tricked us so bad. That and look, crazy. I laugh now to keep from crying because they tricked the shit out of us. We were so fucking tricked. They had we that was, some type of spell work. I feel like when they took down the towers back then, that shit, they must have did something. Look. This is what made me start trying to put the pieces together. Because they didn't want us to study voodoo. Because then we learn how to break curses. And we yeah. learn how to um and then we learn how to answer the questions that the universe has. Mm -hmm. And then we get to when we can answer the universe questions, it tells us who we are. Right, so why they don't want us to learn voodoo? So I started studying voodoo, and I was like, oh, shit, now I see why. Blood magic. Wow. Uh, so I started studying blood magic. And I realized that the Constitution was written in the blood of Crispus Atticus. How do I know that? He was the first sacrifice of the Conjure War. Mm. They wrote the Constitution institution in his blood because you can't spill the blood of the righteous in vain and that's how they instituted the George Washington 200 year country they put mm -hmm. us all, all to sleep mm -hmm. right when they put us all to sleep that level the playing field the only way out is to study our way out mm -hmm. that's why they kept telling us that we didn't like to read no, mm -hmm. but that's why it, it ain't that we didn't yeah. like to read. Yeah, y'all yeah, wouldn't let us read. Yeah. Hmm. You know, there's this anime called Hunter versus Hunter, and um, one of the things that the hunter does when they hunt the demon is they they have like um like stickers with sigils on them, so they would use it to neutralize the demon spirit in some ways and then when they would kill them they would use these certain sigils to um release the spirit from like the bondage of it being you know being damned to hell it would like some of them would get a chance to redeem themselves and then some of them would just would die in a sense to be born into like a new energy so um you know like it's interesting that you say how they demonize so much so many things that actually were a part of our everyday life. Mm -hmm. But a, a, a part of that too, as we're coming back into the knowledge of ourselves, hold on, Juju, let me give you the key. As we come into the knowledge of ourselves, the other thing that we're being reminded is like, how much integrity do we have? Like, you know, when you battling your enemy, I would say possibly, what am I trying to say? Basically, be accountable for your actions and don't be trying to throw magic when you wrong as shit. That's the morals versus dogma uh, equation. Right? Because right? if you don't follow the, the moral compass, you will fall into the dogmatic pursuit. The moral compass exposes the dogma mm -hmm. 
that allows you to walk the straight path. Mm -hmm. Right. By recognizing the dogma now, you is you become spiritually impenetrable by bullshit. Say that one more time. So it's the morals versus dogma. No, That's an Albert. Part. Right. So when you you follow your moral compass, right? It keeps the dogma exposed. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell the difference by following your moral compass because it don't feel right. Dogma don't feel right. Mm. Right? So by you following your moral compass, it's telling you if something don't feel right, don't go that way. Don't follow that. Right? Like, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the dumbest shit in the world to me. He why he just didn't kill the motherfucker causing all of the problems. Well, he had to kill his son. If he really the all powerful, like y'all say, he can get rid of the dark. He don't have to kill the light in order for the dark to flourish and kill it later. He can kill it Johnny on the spot. Mm. Somebody land. We getting tricked somewhere. See, and so with the story, okay, with the story of Jesus, so for me. Again, you are the master of knowledge, so I'm coming to you as a baby in this with, with my thoughts. But the story of Jesus to me is about a real man. It's about a real Pharaoh who saw the darkness in the ways of his own comedic people, the comedic royals. He was seeing how they were corrupted. And so they make it seem like it was only Jesus by himself, but he had, he had a, a whole whole army it was him and his whole family his wife his children all of these things that were doing all of these things everywhere that they were and the family was the 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 the, the sacred house and so in in my thoughts it's like they tell you the truth with coupled lies to confuse you you know to take you away from the fact that christ consciousness is real that there was that there were real apostles in the sense of how they say they were spreading the gospel but these were people with deemed to have power solely because they they honor the divinity within them and throughout the world but correct me and guide me okay so first we got to go back to who wrote the new testament what language was it written in it was english right i don't know the New Greek. Testament was written in Greek. Mm -hmm. All right. It's telling the story about a character that's in Greek. It's written I-E-S-O-U-S. -S, right. This character <clears throat> is the one that they say is the king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the problem with that. The contemporary of the day was a writer by the name of Origen. And a lot of his works was used by the early Catholic Church to write the parameters of the doctrine. In the Nicene Council in 325, they finally came up with a codified doctrine. Now, now the contemporary Isis, because that's the Greek word, I-E-S-O-U, U.S. is ISIS. So the contemporary ISIS with the error, you know her as Cleopatra. Right? So they trying to kill Cleopatra. They say she got bit by a serpent in her chamber, but they don't have her body. Now, what makes that stand out to me is they have this Christ figure who's called ISIS in Greek. And it's translated as Jesus in English. And the contemporary Isis of the day being Cleopatra, they don't have the body of the Jesus of the Bible, and they don't have the body of the Isis, I mean, of the Cleopatra. Mm. You see? So, <clears throat> deductive reason. These then, they took Cleopatra and turned her into a man. That's what you call an Anunnaki war tactic. Mm 
a beheading of a guy. So we need a reference. Where did they do it before that? Before Jesus' story, where did they switch the female God out for a male God? When you go to the pantheon of Greek gods, you run into a goddess by the name of Helen, who Hellenism is named after in the culture of Greece. But when you look at the Rome pantheon, the Helen is a man, and he's the uh, Roman god, right? So where is the story of the ranked Helen? It's the story of Medusa, the dreadlock Gorgon priestess. She was what you call a side priestess. How do I know this? It's in her name. <clears throat> she was the number one, or we count like 10 to 1 over here. They count from 1 to 10 in Kemet. The highest rank is rank number 10. In Kemet, rank number 10 is Medu. Mm. And the priesthood she was under was the Sa, S-A. So when you say Medusa, you say the 10th ranked Sa priestess. She is the highest ranked of the Sa priestesses. Now, if this is true, that means she has to be accompanied by two more priestesses of the Gorgon, I mean, of the Sa order. They call them the three Gorgons. Medusa was the leader of the three Gorgons. Right? So they still telling us the Cleopatra story just in a different culture. So now when you go back and look at the story, you'd be like, wait a minute, somebody ain't telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's how come every time one of them dudes with the stringy hair and the beard say he Jesus Christ, they know he lying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Jesus Christ means the anointed Isis. Christ means the anointed one. Comes from the root word karas, mm -hmm. meaning to be anointed with the oil from the um, Sobek priestess who get get the oil from the crocodile. Mm. The replica oil is called olive oil for ceremonial purposes. Mm. So all, all the time, that's why when the baby boy was born, Heru, in the Bible, they called him Emmanuel and they didn't call his name no more. How his name goes from being Emmanuel, God is with us, to Jesus with no transition or explanation. Hmm. That's because it's the Isis of the day, Cleopatra, and then her son that's the heir to the throne would be the Emmanuel, which I was thinking. is Isis and child. Yeah. It's trickery at his finest. If I didn't know the original story, I wouldn't have been able to pick that apart like that. But that that doesn't displace the that doesn't take away from her husband's position still, right? They don't got nothing to do with her husband's position. You got to remember the story of Cleopatra. She was having an affair with Mark Anthony, and Brutus killed him because she was having an affair with him in the power play. Mm -hmm. They killed her. She went into hiding. She, okay, so they got the elixir, the movie reference is Serpent in the Rainbow. The priestess give you the dust. The dust puts you to sleep for 72 hours. Don't that sound familiar? Yeah, it reminds me of Romeo and Juliet a little bit. but Right. But the 72 hours is the three days for the resurrection. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So when you watch Serpent and Rainbow, it's telling you how to make this stuff. It's mm. telling you where they got it from and that they currently use it in the operating rooms in America, but it's an ancient concoction created in the, um, in the uh, islands of America. Right? And then they took it to Egypt. And if they tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, because the Egyptians wasn't associated with the people over here, right? 
then explain to me the tobacco and the uh, cocaine in the pharaoh's blood when they ran the toxicology test. Because that stuff was only known over here. Right. It don't, it don't grow nowhere else in the world. <laughs> And the Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon is a big comedic hub. Like that's that was actually the um, Egypt was the Hollywood. <clears throat> it was the replica of the Grand Canyon. The original Temple of Isis sat in the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. The rep replica city of Isis is on the Nile in Egypt. Mm. All of those. Temples over there is replica temples that was over here. The, the originals are over here. You can tell because they're older and bigger and more worn by time. Mm. Right. So <clears throat> when you read the Emerald Tablets, to who do you tell you? Okay. Right. So everybody be talking about fallen angels. I heard a dude. Who say to who he was a fallen angel today? I was dying laughing. The fallen angels, they didn't fall. Angels don't fall. They came down here. But, but in order to suit the narrative, they have to tell you they fail. So you don't know some of them came to walk as me and amongst me and in order to fix a problem that couldn't be fixed from the ethers alone. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. You know, it's just a war thing. Definitely. Family feud. Definitely. <sighs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's why I'm not cheating, God. Where is he? And no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. No, I'm not kidding. Let me stop saying that. <laughs> Thank you, you always. You, are, you already know where he at. And you need to stop playing with yourself. I, uh, I need to level up. That's what's happening. Yeah. Before he, he finds somebody yeah. else, don't leave me. <laughs> All right, now I'm about to um, I'm about to answer some of the questions in the question okay. box, and then I'm about to log off because I'm getting tired now. All right, All right peace. All right, inbox me. Okay, I will. All right. The Lionsgate portal, that's the question I'm on, y'all. What, uh, what up, uh, this Lionsgate portal going to be some serious? You know, <clears throat> these um, portals, gates, stellar gates, stargates, they bring different energy in, and sometimes it'll be dramatic, but sometimes it seems to be uneventful, you know, but you have what's called a window of opportunity for major events to take place when you see these gate, these gates, open, these star gates open. This is reading the star map. So it's hard to say what's going to happen, but it doesn't surprise me if something good happens. Gematria has a computer. Let me show y'all the story. So Gematria is not controlled by a supercomputer. Gematria is the uh, conversion of things into numbers. Numerology is the translating of the meaning of the numbers, and you need them together. That's why when you see people um, calculating gematria and finding numerical similarities, that's far as they go when they don't know numerology to translate. Okay, so you got five words to come out with the same meaning on the gematria calculator. But if you don't know numerology, you just showing the numbers. You don't even know what that shit mean, right? So that's only one part of the tools required in order to get to the meaning of the numbers, right? But no, Gematria is an ancient reading, numerical reading system created by our ancestors.
the Holy Spirit is 100% the mother. But in a homosexual uh, cult religion, they have to take the divine feminine mother out of the equation in order to push the patriarchal agenda. She's The Holy Spirit is 100% the mother. Okay, and with descending the two sign, I have a question about the meaning of his last name in the association which Rashad Jamal um, bringing the reincarnated spirit of two seven love. Y'all related if you are descending a two sign, because if he's not a blood descendant, he wouldn't be able to be the reincarnation of a two sign. He had to be a blood relative. Okay. Uh, no. <clears throat> Going to college won't help you fight past the system. But what, what it will do is make you a better trained slave. Um, some... And, you can get to some colleges, but they're not Ivy League colleges where you can get actual classes in like metaphysics and quantum physics. But for the most part, college is designed to train managers to govern the dropouts in the high school graduates. College is not designed to give you a uh, opportunity to be a billionaire is designed to stop you and cap your income um, and to limit your progress. You don't go to school to get into a um, career to be rich. You get into go to school to get a career to support the system. That's the only reason why it's there. Look, look, if, if you're a Scorpio, the only person that can tell you how to better understand yourself is you. Quetzalcoatl was an older version of Tahuti. Yes. It's also, also uh, Kukulakan and a couple of other uh, native names at different times under different cultural rules did the name change. As a Scorpio, though, you have to, um, you, you self-guided. You got, like, you automatically tapped into your own self. If you listen, and you will tell yourself what to study next. <clears throat> the ringing in your ear is the, um, activation of certain light codes in the brain that come in on the audio um on the audio section of the brain where you perceive sound the vibration comes through the ear that comes in the left ear off the right brain from the mother line anterior gyrus and from the linear logic side in the right ear i mean the uh yeah, in the right ear off the father line. So if you get in both ears, that means that you are tuning in each side, each hemisphere of the brain to facilitate your logic and your um, abstract reasoning to converge on one another. And that's opening up your holographic memory. Why are they go black women land grants? I don't understand this question. But I'm going to tell you this. The mothers of the land. Oh, if, if, okay. I, okay, so that, that's not what she meant. This is what she meant. Why is the government giving land grants to black women? Because it's your shit. 
and they trying to just keep you from knowing so they give you a little piece of it so you don't ask for it all back it's a nice little tactic but i'm gonna tell you what it is <clears throat> So playing cards are um, part of the tarot deck originally. There's tarot meanings to a regular deck, and it depends on which card you get that tells you what they mean. So your ancestors is telling you to learn the meaning of the cards while they're trying to give you messages so that you can be able to perceive the messages without the cards, if that makes sense to you. So the cards is the training wheels for the messages you've been missing. So they've been leaving cards to tell you to understand the meaning so that you can get the message. Do I think the moon is a reincarnation? Nobody is reincarnationally trapped. That's some bullshit. You here because you came here to participate in the game of the gods. If you when you reincarnate, that's because you're going into a different chapter in your books of life. You might have had more than one purpose why you came here, but you can't leave until you fulfill each other purposes you came to fulfill. It's just contractual. That's why you're here. Can't nobody tra trap you here. This is a free will universe. You come here to learn how to be the best version of yourself. The system in place is a balancing act between opposite energies, masculine and feminine, for you to reach your optimum potential. The moon is a spaceship. It's a battleship. That's why you only can see one side of it because you see the other side of it. You will see the metropolises and the people and the hustle and the bustle of all the motherfuckers walking around up there laughing at your ass. <clears throat> Reincarnation work like this. You, you're a light body. <clears throat> you want to live the life you want to be Mike Tyson. So when you born, before you incarnate, you map the plot, your path, what's called your life path. You find out what your life path is by finding your life path number matching that to everything you learned up until the point you found out your life path number. Then you see how they co they work in harmony together that tell you what your life purpose was when you came in. Now, once you get done living the life that you chose, the way you chose to live it, you can al always have the opportunity to change your life purpose at any given time, you apply your will because it's a free will universe. But in assuming you don't learn how to use your own willpower to plot your future and the progress of your life, then you go into autopilot and you follow your book of life unknowingly what you're doing. And as you do this, you live out your life that you plotted prior, what you call your predestined path. Now, once you do that, okay, now you're done. Now you check out, go put on a different avatar because you got another life purpose to live in order to get your degrees of being from University Earth. In your next life, you might choose to be Michael Jordan instead of Mike Tyson. So now 
you have to walk the path of learning to play basketball, practicing until you can dribble with both hands, learning how to shoot, learning the subtle movements on the court in order to give you the best position to shoot from. All of this stuff you're learning is you um, following your predestined path, or you could have changed your mind when you got here, applied your willpower, and then wrote a new book of life in real time. Some of us come in with a blank book. If you come in with a blank book, that means whatever your life turned out to be is exactly what you want. <clears throat> So the ritual of baptism, go back to the water cleanse. And the water cleanse would originally use baptism rituals was to clean the baby from the um from from the birth debris that's on them right after birth. This is the origin of baptism, washing the baby. Then when the priest found that when a person um, changes their life purpose, they become born again. They pick a new purpose in life. And you anoint them with the oil or you give them the same ritual you give a newborn baby when you wash them. You wash the old stuff off and welcome them into a new life. That's where it originated. And now what you got is a, a, a financial advertisement for religion passed off as a baptism. So what was originally um, a tradition in the earth tribes, they turned it into a celebrity style display at the churches in order to lure more followers. Is the sky top glass stone vault and does the sun have conscious free will? The sun does have free will, so to speak, but the sun is an accumulation of the um, energy, masculine energy given to it from the prime creator. So when it sends out the signals, it alerts. Um, the planets under its jurisdiction to respond. It's like your crown chakra um, tuning in to source and then telling your other chakras the correct alignment. It's the same way a solar system operates to align planets to a sun. Okay, so this question, she asked me if burning what she write down as a manifestation do anything. So when you do that, you harness in fire magic and you using the fire magic. Okay, first you took it from the mind, right? That's wind, air. Then you put it on paper. That's earth, tangible, 3D. But then you sent it up into the ethers, spirit, by using the means of fire, the fourth element. So now you use the four elements to reach to the fifth element. And that is what you call um, 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 fire magic. When you burn what, what your intention is, you send it to the spirit. So now you took it from the mind, you put it on the paper, you set the paper on fire, the only thing missing is the water. And a lot of people, when they do it, they have a thing of water close by anyway to incorporate the energy of the water into the magic. The more elements you use in a conjure, the more powerful the conjure is if you're proficient in all of the elements you're using.
So <clears throat> it's a good question right here. The the ones who remain loyal, we're talking about your Bushes, your Rothschilds, your Bilderbergs, um, that remain loyal to the Dirty Moors, your JDL, your ADL, to push these false agendas will be held just as accountable as the fucking Dirty Moors. The ones who came to give aid and assistance will receive the benefit of those who show favor to us in a time of war, right? So everybody going to get exactly what they earn, no matter what they look like, good, bad, or indifferent. The work that they put in is the reward they going to get out. Everybody that look like they so-called white ain't white. 90% of them motherfuckers passing. That's what y'all don't understand. Probably more than that. Nature knows no color line. J. Rogers. J. Rogers, Sex and Race, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. Right? It's more than that, but I'm them just the easiest ones, most palatable to read, to understand that there is no so-called pure Aryan white race in existence on this planet because they won't be able to withstand the solar rays to the point we are now. And it's some melanated people that's going to get turned off because they don't have the mitochondrial link to the earth. So the racism doctrines was given to them to hold them in power and they enforced it, they responsible. For the ones who re rebelled against it, they not responsible for the dirt that the dirty motherfuckers did, right? It's th that simple. You're going to get what you earn, good, bad, or indifferent, right or wrong. If you was wrong, you're going to get a wrong man's reward. If you was right, you're going to get a right man's reward. If you was doing the dirt, you're going to get buried. If you was trying to stay away from the dirt, then you're going to dig yourself out. It's that simple. It's this right this ain't nothing new we used to call pale faces children of the moon and they was part of the family of albinos who had high magic powers by incorporating the energy from the moon called lilith of saturn you used to be able to see saturn in the night sky but the earth orbit has since shifted so now you can't see Saturn and they use the moon to block the energy from Lilith to keep the um, brighter skinned people, the children of the moon from being able to harness that Lilith energy and light their ass up with a motherfucking fireball in D.C. from Los Angeles. They don't, they don't, they did every precaution to prevent us from raising up in power and the most destructive one is the doctrine of racism. <clears throat> so when you flying in your dreams, it's in order for the dream to have a standout meaning of a spiritual nature to you. But only you can translate what it means by knowing your intentions in the dream or what you was looking for is always something attached to that. No, I ain't feeling that why not back in me and why not it be on this month for hours and I'm ready, almost ready to go to bed. I'm trying to answer a few more questions off the question box before I go. Me and why not get on here? I don't, I'm not going to go to sleep to three in the morning, <laughs> four in the morning. Um, um, Okay, and how do Capricorns manage Saturn's disciplinary influence? You have to embody that energy. You have to discipline yourself um, to a higher level than you do other people, and then that'll make you have to discipline other people less. So the more you discipline you, the less you have to discipline others. And that's balancing that Saturn energy. 
but that Lilith energy can always send you into a, a war path because when Lilith see injustice, the judge in Saturn becomes destructive to itself in order to establish justice. So you got to always be aware when you're dealing with that Saturn energy that as the judgmental disciplinary and energy, Saturn will crush you if Lilith tell him to. So having constant dreams of being inside of a video game might be your way of reminding you that you were in a holographic simulated reality assembled for the training of the gods to balance the energy of polar opposites. Look, you have what's called cultural dietary practices. For thousands of years, your bloodline ate a certain way. The more you get to your original bloodline diet, that's why some people go vegan, because their bloodline come from a long line of vegans, and they flourish on vegetables alone, where other people require um, or their bloodline ate certain meats like fish, bison, or like some of them um, um, ate chicken, turkey. So when you know what's palatable or um, compatible with your genetic makeup, a good book to read to give you an idea how to look at it, it's a book called Eat Right for Your Blood Type that can help a lot we're understanding um, dietary practices. But everybody is not meant to be vegan and everybody is not meant to be carnivorous, eat meat. You have to know your body in order to know if it's functional for you to quit meat or some people quit all of the meat byproducts. But you have to be self-aware to know where you fit in. The fatigue factor is a, a, a heavy side effect of the UV rays. It's a lot of UV uh, rays coming in affecting the earth. And also the degree that the earth is changing. And when these two things are happening like they are simultaneously, it also causes the individual's genetic makeup to begin to change. And the only way you repair yourself is in your stasis, which we call sleep state. The mud floods is exactly that. Um, what happened is, is they would blow up. Um, size of the mountain after they dam up um, a dam. When you had an avalanche, you let the water from the dam burst free. And when the water and the avalanche mix, it, it causes a massive mudslide. And they've been doing that. They did that to a lot of our cities. That's why a lot of the cities not on the map no more because they covered them in mud or they just flat out dammed them up and buried them in the lake, right? And this is all documented, so it can be looked up. It's not hard to find. They just call them, they just say the mud floods just happened. That's some bullshit. If you believe that, then I got some swamp land in Florida. 
I can sell you for a good price. So, yeah. This science, the African, what they call root science, it's the same science that we had over here with different names for the Orishas. The Orishas' names over here was what we call Mexo-American names, right? But it's the same science. It's the Earth defensive magical science for balancing out the earth so when you study in the seven african powers them same powers is found in mesoamerica in hieroglyphs and throughout mexico going down into south america um some of the other gods in egypt can also be found in mesoamerica so you're not doing nothing wrong that's one of the reasons Garvey told us to form a confraternity with Africa, because we had to relearn those ancient um, um, rituals to help us break the Kanja war we was in, since they erased our history and killed anybody that passed our languages down. We've lost a lot of our indigenous languages and cultural practices, so we have to go to kindred tribes from around the world to piece our science of recovery back together. So um, you should study all occult sciences if you are a priest. You shouldn't take sides in the information and remember that when you reading these people, you really just reading the energy signatures that you can control to manifest a better tomorrow out of the struggles of today. This is culturally um, different, right? Because right? we born in Orisha bloodlines already. The, so these bloodlines that we be born into, these are, are the ones we call Orishas as great ancestors of ours. And we all over the world, but these, these are the ancestors whose power, when we activate them in the self, um wakes up our higher self to who we are and we can work with the energies of any one of the orisha um if we understand who we are if we don't the orisha that you working with will send you to somebody from the orisha bloodline you from so, so Let's say a girl, because she feel like she Oshun, start working with Oshun energy, but she's really a daughter of Yimiya. Oshun will train her in all of the Oshun rights until she become aware that she in the wrong school, and then she'll send her back home to go learn her rightful practices and vice versa, right? So the Arisha not um, like stubborn people it's energies you work with um to, to help you realize yourself and the the natural uh spiritual energy is going to put you in your rightful category even if you have to start off wrong path in order to get to the right path when you start working with any one of the ancestral energies called orisha they're going to always teach you first enough to make you aware of where you rightfully belong. Then they're going to send you there. They're going to align the energy where you find yourself in your rightful position in order to be most effective working with the ancestral energies.
every so-called human is a reptilian mammalian hybrid if you human being that's what you is you got a reptilian brain old mammal brain new mammal brain the old mammal brain is your primate brain the reptilian brain is your reptile brain then your new mammalian brain is your sapien sapien brain or what they call the brain that facilitates the god mind or the animal brain however you want to call it but you can work, work with reptilian energy look chaos magic say if it worked use it um everybody not a chaos magician though but can chaos magic if it worked use it when you're working with reptilian energy you have to be aware that the snake is beginner um foolish energy and that's why a snake will bite its owner whereas when you work with the um lizard energy you working with a higher reptilian energy when you work with the dragon energy now you working with reptile master energy the dragon mean master so once you get to that dragon energy when you're gonna first go through what's called a self-initiation where you looking in the mirror and you dragon dancing with yourself the goal is not to bite your tail when you bite your tail that means you failed your lesson you have to go back and learn it all over again flip you into a loop that's why you have see um there's no religion higher than truth and the serpent is biting his tail as long as the tail not bit that means he passed the lesson if you bite his tail that means that he wasn't ready for the dance, right? So once you get good and you can dance with yourself without biting your tail, now you're ready to dance with a partner. When you dance with a partner, um, then now y'all dragon dancing, y'all normally have to have what's called a referee, a priest that's the referee to determine if you who bit their tail. It's um it's a test for masters and it's called dragon dancing but there's no actual dragon involved it's psychic energy being unleashed at its highest potential under the control of the person who's releasing the energy and the dragon dance with a partner is two people using a psychic energy to its highest level to communicate without biting their tail without biting their partner tail don't step on your dance partner's feet is the um, instruction so once these two energies dragon dancing one of them has to lead and one of them has to follow but neither one of them can miss a beat right and that's a, a whole higher consciousness exercise of spiritual development and that's why they had dragon schools in the Far East, but that's what they was for, right? What we be seeing right now is martial arts is ballet to them. The real martial arts is not privy to be on display in the public because you can really do some real damage. They now starting to come out because the elders been calling the masters to come out. So sooner or later, they gonna come out, but when they come out, they come in for every, fight championship on the planet whenever they come out and they not bullshitting and they fighting styles is impeccable yeah The program is not Sophia. Sophia is the combat mechanism of wisdom from the mother that we use to fight against the holographic matrix. The holographic matrix was turned on with what we call the Big Bang. It's held in place by the Dark Knight satellite in the moon. And um, it's to, to keep us is to keep us at low vibration so we will behave more human than God. And it's allowing us to 
a simulate uh, it's like an accelerated learning program in the spirit realm though it seems like it's a long drawn out lesson while you on earth in the spirit realm it's just a quick let me download this information boom i'm done it's like instant because time is not a constraint in the spirit as it is in the hologram the hologram use the mechanics of time in order to give you a separation in events due to the delay in the manifestation and as long as you think that you're more human than you actually are you can't access those higher gifts that can accelerate and slow down on time no that that's malleable in the powers of the mind you can speed up and slow down time and all it is is because of this mind matrix we in. Once we learn how to master this, see, you got to understand that there's a delay in our ability to manifest. And because of the delay, most of us don't know that the suffering and the reality is what we manifest by being frustrated at the time interval between the manifestation. Because we're not looking at it's a process to get where we want to be. If we don't implement a process to get to the destination, the time gets heavy and drawn out and miserable. As soon as we realize that there's a delay in our manifestation, and the only way to bring it totally into fruition is to go through all other steps of the process of manifestation that means first visualize it then all, all of the things to get you from where you at to the manifestation you have to do your due diligence and then the universe can finish connecting the dots for you right and it makes your manifestation appears faster it's not that it's faster it's that you have more control of your mental body to apply this without allowing the struggles of working through the restrictions that the linear time frames put on your ability to manifest into reality what you're working on a lot of people get frustrated because of the delay and that make them fail to complete the manifestation they abandon it before they've done their due diligence to acquire it so the universe say abort mission don't manifest that bullshit he didn't mean it and the manifestation was put there the delay was to stop us from acting in the moment of rage and manifesting something we won't we will be guilty or don't mean at the time we just mad so now we have to put the buffer there and the buffer it comes across as the concept of time and this is what prevent us from going to higher um understandings of our ability to manifest and we read bullshit like the secret that threaten to tell you the secret throughout the entire book but never tell you the secret you always in the matrix as long as you're in the human body the matrix is controlled by mitochondrial then as a matter of fact the matrix is in the mitochondrial your consciousness comes to you through mitochondrial energy input into the dna that commands the organism on what to be but you can interrupt the pattern by going the wrong direction, flipping your mirrors backwards.
So a lot of y'all are not aware, there is an army base in Texas. There's a whole lot of orphans that's coming through that base, and they're sending them to um, different people throughout the country to take care of the children that they're extracting from underground tunnels and human trafficking rings. And they have to try to find a lot of these kids' parents but unfortunately, all of them not going to be able to find their parents. So the chiefs is going to end up being foster parents or godparents to a couple hundred children apiece that we're going to have to be responsible for their well-being. And we're going to have to have a structured uh, format to receive these children. They really pulling them out. They really been pulling children from dark places for the last four and a half years almost five years at least the mission started when trump first got elected under the white hat um operation before they started with the QAnons, and telling us about what's going on these children has been the central part of what's making the mothers mad enough to reclaim their shit and the patriarchs knew that eventually the mothers was going to get fed up and make one of these boys, chiefs, go out there and do something so that we can protect these children. And this is was the benefit was they used the children's exploitation to keep us in the slumber. The side effect is that some of the elder women was able to wake up in the slumber and start doing the um, bridging of the gaps in order to break the curses they was using by spilling righteous blood in the form of children. When they talk about the blood of the saints, that's what they talking about. The innocent children is what makes them saints. Not them motherfuckers the Catholic Church tell you they a saint. Ain't none of them motherfucking saints. Them babies that they've been murdering, them that's the innocence. And that's what saint really means. So when they talk about being intoxicated on the blood of the saints, they're telling you that the baby murder is how they was going to keep us in the stupor once they do the blood ritual to put us under, which was the assassination of Crispus Atticus and writing his blood, the Constitution in his blood, which was really an oral tradition. But they used his blood and wrote it down in order to usurp us. That shit was crazy. But we woke now. So I hope that answered your question. But Big Mama is fed up with these motherfuckers. They throwing their tantrums on the way out. But they got to go. Okay, I'm going to do two more questions y'all and I'm gonna wrap it up look <clears throat> when they brought the few little people they brought from Africa they didn't bring them to the mainland of America they took them to the islands in South America they end up mixing with the tribes. Now, over here on the East Coast of America, for thousands of years, the royal families of Africa and the royal families of the Americas have intermarried. You have people from Kenya showing up in Polynesian islands before the arrival of any of those people that invaded and colonized later. We always knew each other. We always, because we traded wives with royal families to purify the blood. Periodically, you can't keep marrying into the same family with no outside blood because that'll break down the bloodline. All you got to do is study the Habsburgs. That's what they tried to do. It don't work. So on the West Coast, the Califia Queens would allow the men to marry women from Asia, from Japan, China, and 
they were boats that they, but that shit that they tell us in the transatlantic slave trade is not possible. Those couldn't have been the ships that they transported any kind of slaves because that was a gas chamber in a week. And we talking about a long ass trip with no motherfucking bathroom, no running water. You got to remember, they used to have you swab the deck, the poop deck. That's where everybody used to shit. That's why it was called the poop deck. If you watch the cartoon Popeye, you remember that his father was a Navy man and his name was Poop Deck Pappy. The poop deck, the one who was over the poop deck was the Pappy over the poop deck, Poop Deck Pappy. That means that he was the one who appointed the person to brush the shit into the ocean and scrub the shit off the poop deck, right? So when we, we look at all that stuff and the slave ship narrative is that they was chained man to man like sardines in the hull of a ship. That's not possible. Nobody could withstand, because you got to remember, if they're not a seafaring people, they're going to get seasick and throw up. They're going to have diarrhea from drinking salt water because there's, no there's not enough fresh water to water that many people, right? right? You got to remember the rickets. You got to remember that most of them used to take kegs of beer to drink on the seas because they didn't have fresh water, right? They didn't know how to purify salt water at the time. So if you drink salt water, it's going to give you diarrhea. It's a laxative. This is not possible, right? It's not possible for the narrative they gave us. But the reason they gave us that slave ship narrative was for us to discover academia as the... Um, destination specifically notre dame university is where the slave narrative as a military strategy to usurp the people was written right and this is the harsh treatment under the george washington challenge that they speak of right and so the the they didn't mix in on the Trail of Tears. They mixed in Mongols that wasn't chained to the hull of the ship. They could go to the poop deck. And they had a sh shorter trip going from Europe to New York than they did coming from Africa, catching the current around, which took about six to nine months. Whereas the current that takes you from um, from England, uh, from Europe to America, only take like two weeks, right? So it's a whole different story they're telling us from the reality that we faced with. We, we know they were seafarers. This is, but the way that they tell us that narrative, it doesn't fit with. Any, any type of scientific observation, it doesn't fit. But it's the perfect layover for the cathedral at Notre Dame University. When you lay it over, you realize it's a blueprint. What's a blueprint? A blueprint is the structure of a way a thing is supposed to be on paper, right? Right? And the structure of white supremacy is the protocols of the wise men of Zion. And the organization and the rollout is by using morals and dogma as a blueprint or as a template to operate the blueprint in order to build the community or the structure of a false narrative, right? So they, they was building us up to replace us by us not knowing who we was, by us knowing who we are, and now they don't know what to do. They mad as hell because I know who my people is when I see them, and I don't need nobody from outside of us to tell me who we is, and I don't need man book because I know how to read the culture that I'm from. 
When I see things that don't fit with our culture, I know that right there is an invader. It's an imposter. That's somebody that look like us that's not us. Right? So the um, comparative analysis tells us that this is not functionally possible to use this slave ship narrative and it be true. Then that brings to remembrance that Winston Churchill said the truth so valuable, it must be carefully guarded by a ring of lies. I didn't say that shit. The people that was doing the dirt said that shit. So if they come if they concealing the truth with a ring of lies, what's the truth that the ring of lies encompass? The truth of the matter is we was here before their Bible came and we gonna be here when they Bible leave. When a Bible came, it brought with them a contract using the priests as motherfucking military advancement teams. First wave of nonviolent resistance to the people of the land. If you can get them to accept this Bible, we can control them for the next umpteen years, right? So we have to wake up and realize this shit is over with. And we not falling for the banana in the tailpipe no more. And look. When you move in righteousness, you become awakened by earth and prime creator. I don't give a damn what you look like. If both earth and prime creator agree you righteous, can't nobody run you out of here. I don't care if you uh, blue black with nappy ass hair or if you don't got no color in your pale ass mayonnaise color skin. And your hair is the same color blind to match it, what they call platinum blind. Righteousness is the remedy for the problems of the earth. Anybody vibrating on the frequency of righteousness, if the earth and prime creator feel like you belong here, you will be here. Period. And it, and it ain't my call. Okay, I got one more question in me. You know, when me and Chief White and I started this video um we talked about artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is nothing but an electronic um link between points or what they call bits of information ai can never become truly sentient because it'll never advance beyond a four bit quantum encryption that's it all it is is it's like a whole bunch of encyclopedias in a database. You can program it to have the appearance of emotion and all of that shit. But it's not sentient. It can't be sentient. For one, it's got to be made of organic matter to begin with. And it's made of crystalline um um and crystals and metals that's operational functional the they not in the form that facilitates the organic development of its own accord the mechanical nature of it is a computer uh a computer uh motherboard you your ai has to come through a device with a computer motherboard That'll 
prevent it in and of itself from ever becoming sentient on its own. But it can mimic sentient beings because it's predicated up on the human mind. Therefore, the function of it over time can give more of an appearance of functioning like a human, but it won't be able to because the human will be able to always, when a human born, whatever artificial intelligence is here, the human has to be born more intelligent than the artificial intelligence in order to maintain nature. So, um, that's it for me, fam. I, I, I did the best I could with the time I had today. Um, Chief Warhorse gave me a, a day pass. I don't know when I'm going to be back on. I'm not looking forward to, to no time soon. Um, share the video. Pass the information forward. Hopefully, I answered a lot of questions today because I was getting it in while I was getting it in. All right. Peace to the uh to the guy.